organized by the Department of Computer Science and Engineering and Information Technology in collaboration with Institutions Innovation Council, IIC PECB. I'm extremely pleased to inform you that we have participants from different states across the country, India. The names of the states from where we have candidates who have participated in this live webinar are West Bengal, Jharkhand, UP, Rajasthan, Assam, Bihar, Tamil Nadu, Odisha, Chhattisgarh, Telangana, Uttarakhand, Andhra Pradesh, Delhi, Maharashtra, Arunachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Sikkim, Jaipur, and Karnataka. On behalf of Techno Engineering College, Banipur, I, Mrs. Shantani Ghosh, Assistant Professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, take this opportunity to convey my sincere gratitude to our respected principal, Dr. Molay Kumar Chandra, and our CEO of TCB, Mr. Shumanto Chatterjee, for motivating and encouraging us to organize this webinar with an objective to help us realize the significance of mental peace for leading a stress-free, happy, and a healthy life. It is therefore my humble request to our principal, Sir, Professor Molay Kumar Chandra, to share with us everybody his views on sustenance crisis that the world is experiencing at present. Sir, it is my request to you to please share your valuable insights with all of us present here at this live webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Respected Thank you. Mrs. Manasi Rai Chaudhary, co-chairman, Techno India Group. Mr. Pauline Laravel, Director, Sustainable Development Global. Dr. Sastri Jai Priyavadan, Consultant Psychiatrist. Dr. Abdul Mazid, Associate Professor, SKMS Medical College, Srinagar. Dr. Ranjan Vatacharya, HOD, Department of Psychiatry, Murshidabad Medical College and Hospital. Dr. Gautam Saha, Director, Clinical Brain Neuropsychiatric Institute of Research, Kolkata. Distinguished participants, learned faculties, students, and the service provider. Very good afternoon to all. Today's webinar on a future perspective of COVID-19 mental health issue has been organized and initiated by the Computer Science Engineering Department of Techno Engineering College, Banipur, Habra, Kolkata. I, Dr. Mayam K. Chandra, being a principal of TACB, has a privilege and pleasure to introduce Mrs. Manashi Rai Chaudhuri, our honorable co chairman of Techno India Group. She is the first lady of Techno India Group, uh, being the inspiration factor behind the worst empire, founder of which respected Professor Gautam Rai Chaudhuri. Mrs. Manashi Rai Chaudhuri plays a role model to those women who are incapable of coming out in the limelight with their potentials and with her greed and determination. Mrs. Manasi Rauchadi, to serve the responsibility of a school, colleges, university under her belt, pan India wise to a greater height. End of with grace, elegance her own style statement, consular of music and sports, Mrs. Manasi Raisadi with her charming personality attracts the heart of many. Her role of being the mother is not only for her children, but her students and staff as well. Winner of many awards of high playing and success, Mrs. Manasi Raisadi remains always humble and grounded. A dynamic leader who strikes a beautiful balance with her role as a wife, mother, daughter, and daughter-in-law, also as a business woman. I, on behalf of the Techno Engineering College, Banipur, welcome all of you. Over to something. Thank you, sir. 
I would now like to introduce to everyone our distinguished and eminent chief guest, Mrs. Manushi Roy Chaudhary, the first lady of Techno India Group. She has been the inspirational factor behind the vast empire, founder of which is Sri Gautam Roy Chaudhary. Mrs. Manushi Roy Chaudhary walked in steps with Sri Gautam Roy Chaudhary to serve the responsibilities of schools, colleges, and universities. Everybody, please join me in wel welcoming Mrs. Manushi Roy Chaudhary. Ma'am, all of us are eagerly waiting to hear a few words from you, which will surely enlighten our today's event. Ma'am. Very good evening, everyone of here. Good evening, ma'am. Very good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma ma it's a real pleasure to be present for such a webinar during our lockdown days. And I think at this moment, a few topics are really of importance, which is related to COVID-19, of which one is online education, and the second is our mental health. So I should thank the principal, the computer science department who has chosen such a topic, which is really important to be discussed and to be taken care of so that we are at peace and we feel that whatever we are doing for this purpose during these lockdown days is best for us, is best for our students and best for the institutes. Well, I was going through the list of speakers. We are really thankful to neuro, psychiatrists, doctors from Murshidabad, from Srinagar, and with 150 plus participants, I feel that, yes, Banipur College has really done a great job by going into such a webinar so su successfully. Uh, I should thank the total team who is behind this total arrangement, and yes, uh, this is the time we should work hand in hand, we should go together, we should think about each other so that we can take up the problems. Now, there's a line that believe in yourself and you'll be halfway through, yes. The belief in oneself is so, so very important. You know, it's said that when there are thousands of reasons to cry, you have to create a million reasons to smile. That is what your mental health helps you to do. For the students, for the students, it's very important. They are all inside their homes. And you would initially definitely hear them saying, what will happen? The schools are closed. The university colleges are closed. We are not having our classes. When will we meet our friends? When will we go to the campus? It was the stage in the first time. Slowly, Techno India Group Colleges took up to online education. Teachers started working hard. Again, there comes motivation. We should reach the students. Students should not miss their classes. Then the students started feeling that, yes, Techno India Group College Banipur is actually working hard, the teachers, the staff, so that we are not missing our classes. For the teachers, it was really a tough time. We are so thankful to the group of teachers and all the staff who were working day and night to make these online classes possible. Interconnectivity problems, internet problems, staying in the house, no help in those days, and a panic of the, for the virus. But yes, they could do it. 
they could reach the students through their online classes. The teachers need a good round of applause for this. And the support from the parents. Well, staying in such suburbs and rural zones, they were always beside us to support the students so that the teachers can be with them. Again comes support, motivation, and working hand in hand. So ultimately, the teamwork has worked out. For this, I would suggest students should always feel that they should do their best. They should be confident. They should think that the portion they are doing gives them satisfaction. Have a good discipline routine. Go for a good diet, healthy diet, sleep in time, take rest, and create moments of happiness. Create it from every small moment you enjoy. You could feel happiness, you could feel happy when you see a bud blooms into a flower. Don't you feel happy when you see the sky nowadays? It's so blue. It's full of white clouds. Doesn't it make you happy? That gives you the motivation. Take out these small moments of happiness in your life to make you push through and be confident. So we are eagerly waiting. The students, the participants are all eagerly waiting to hear from the four doctors who are with us today for us. But thanks for the guidance from the principal. Thank you everyone who has come to join this webinar. So thank you a lot and a very, uh, my best wishes for a successful and very organized webinar. Thank you so, so much. It's a pleasure for being with you all at this moment. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your valuable and insightful. It's a pleasure for my end. It's a pleasure. With all of us. Thank you, ma'am. It means a lot to us. We are highly privileged to hear from you, ma'am. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. It gives me great pleasure to welcome our second guest of honor, Ms. Colin Laravoy. Managing Director, Techno India Group. Ms. Paulin was born in Paris and graduated from top business school, HEC Paris, with a master's degree in sustainability and social innovation. She is the co-founder of the association Aqua that supports social enterprise and NGOs through social impact assessment study. She is presently the Sustainability Director at Techno India Group, Kolkata. Ma'am, it is my request to you to share with us your perception about life and how we can acclimatize ourselves with this new normal that has brought in a massive change in our way of living. Thank you so much for uh, having me tonight for this great program. I will never be able to insist enough on how important mental health is to be talked out about, which is something that we sometimes forget to do and, and we haven't taken the habit of doing, especially in, within the education curricula. Um, I remember it was Almost two years ago, I had uh, just moved uh, to Kolkata and uh, we organized a, pro a similar program, a physical program on main campus in, in um, on Tech Media Men's, Men's Play campus uh, about mental health awareness. And I remember uh, because it was one of the very few pro first programs about mental health at Techno India then over there. Um, 
the kind of um, heartwarming feelings and feedback that we got from the students who were finally able to express themselves on topics that they had never been invited to talk about before was amazing. And I think, I think what, um, I think I, I want to really congratulate Techno India College Banipur for such a great initiative to, you know, embed me mental health into topics that we talk about almost on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, in between faculty mentors, in between students. Really, that we need to learn how to be comfortable with. You know, I think it's one of the, um, fundamental disciplines and subjects that should be in our curriculum right from age zero on how to check in, how to check out at the beginning and at the end of the day with our students, how to make sure that they have a space to express themselves, not only students, but also any, any staff, any faculty mentor, a space to, uh, to, to, to vent out, to express themselves, and, and uh, that we'd also allow a specific organization or institution to spot and identify uh, well-being challenges that could maybe find, uh, that could maybe be solved quite easily if they were to be expressed. So congratulations to the whole uh, Techno India College Banipur team and thank you so much for having me tonight. Um, <clears throat> just a couple of mention on mental health. Again, I think it's one of these, in the same way we learn about writing and reading, we should learn about how to deal with our mental health balance uh, at a very young age as a very powerful weapon against negative thoughts and mental imbalance in our future. I think in a way there, there's, there's a duty of, of educational institutions to instill and inculcate positive spirits, uh, mental health balance, optimism to our students that we still do not master or don't really know how to do in terms of pedagogy or don't really stress and highlight upon. And I think it's super encouraging to see the, the growing efforts toward mental health awareness. So again, kudos to everyone. Congratulations for this great, great step. And um, one last me message I wanted to highlight is also that, you know, um, during my studies, I, I have always been very, very interested in, in, in mental health, in, in our brain, in neurology, and in understanding that our brains, they don't like to change. They don't like, they like habits. If they are facing a crisis or something challenging or something different or something outside of their comfort zone, then it becomes challenging for our, our brains to comprehend and to deal with. And in such a world where uh, uh, change is the only constant, when there's not one day that you don't come to learn something new or experience something new with so much information around us and new experience to go through, it is very difficult to, to remain stable in terms of mental health. Our brains don't like change neurologically. And so how do we develop ease with new challenges? How do we become comfortable with being flexible with, with what comes at us? How, how do we, even if we have COVID-19 and then Amphan cyclone that comes in and maybe tomorrow we'll have the, I don't know, the locust wave coming to West Bengal, who knows? But no matter what life is throwing at us, the, the what will, make us stand strong is not the strength of external factors onto us, it's the strength internally that we have built within on our mental health. And so I'm really looking forward to this, uh, to this session, to all of these knowledge sharing about mental health and how to maybe learn how to deal better uh, with a situation of extreme change the way we are uh, going through nowadays. And, um, and, and again, all the best for the program and congratulations to, to the whole team. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, for the inspiring speech. It is indeed 
A pleasure to hear from you, ma'am. Thank you so much once again. <coughs> I also take this opportunity to convey my heartfelt thanks to the speakers of this webinar, Dr. Gautam Shaha, Director, Clinic Brain Neuropsychiatric Institute and Research Center, Kolkata, Dr. Abdul Majid, Senior Consultant, Psychiatrist and Associate Professor at SKIMS Medical College, Srinagar, Dr. Ranjan Bhattacharya, MD, TNB Psychiatry, MNMS, HOD, Department of Psychiatry, Murshidabad Medical College and Hospital, and Dr. Jay, Shastri Jay Priyavadan, consultant psychiatrist, who have congregated to grace the occasion of this live webinar on mental stress during COVID pandemic. I now request Mr. Shomaditya Roy, President of IIC TECB and presently the teacher in charge in the Department of Information Technology TECB to share his valuable thoughts and ideas on COVID pandemic. Uh, thank you, Professor Shantani Ghosh. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to our respected principal, Dr. Molai Kumar Chandra. Honorable Chief Guest and Co-Chairman of Techno India Group, Mrs. Manushi Rai Chudri, Madam, Honorable Guest, Director of Sustainability, Techno India Group, Ms. Pauline Ladavoy, Madam, Respected uh, Administrative Officer, Shumantro Chatterjee, Respected Dignitaries and Eminent Speaker, Dr. Ranjan Bhattacharya, Dr. Adbul Majid, Dr. Shastri Jai Priyavadan, and Dr. Gautam Shaha. My dear colleagues, my beloved students, and all the participants. We have all been living in a very strange uh, atmosphere of fear for the past three months or so due to this uh, pandemic called COVID. We have to, under lockdown, we have to wear face masks, have to maintain social distancing. We are forced to compromise our regular life for an unknown period of time. And in addition to that, we are always in the midst of the various worries the worries about sustaining our job, the worries about our financial stability, the worries about the health of our near and dear ones. And behind all this, what is slowly happening to us unknowingly is that our mental health is gradually deteriorating. In that point of view, I would like to thank Professor Mumita Chakraborty for arranging such a prevalent webinar with such expert panelists today. On that note, I thank everyone for, for their participation. I hope we have a great session ahead. Thank you. Thank you thank so you much, sir. sir. Thank you, Shomaditya, sir, for sharing with us your views through thank an you. enlivening speech. Thank you. The COVID-19 pandemic is a threat to humanity, not only for its risk to human life and ensuring economic distress, but also for its invisible emotional strain. It is inducing a considerable degree of fear, worry, and concern in the population at large. And among certain groups, particularly older, adults, care providers, and people with underlying health conditions. In public men men mental health terms, the main psychology impact to date is elevated risk rates of stress and anxiety. But as new measures and impacts are introduced, especially quarantine and its effects on many people's usual activities, routines, or livelihoods, thereby levels of loneliness and depression are anticipated to rise. Thus, through this webinar, we wish to learn how to cope up with mental distress and lessen the feelings of dismay and apprehension. In this context, I would like to request our respected speaker, Mr. Gautam Shaha, to take his place in this webinar and initiate 
the teaching and learning phase of this web event with Dr. A. B. Majid, Dr. Ranjan Bhattacharya, and Dr. J. Shastri. Hello. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, sir. Yeah. At the outset, I must congratulate the Institutions Innovation Council, Techno Engineering College, Banipur, and all the dignitaries and the other three eminent speakers, Dr. Ranjan Bharchas, Dr. Joy Shastri, and Dr. Abdul Majid. All the three years, the eminent speakers of all over India, of Indian Psychiatric Society. I'm really thankful to the students who are present here. Your presence definitely motivating us to deliver whatever I, we learned in this COVID area. You know that in this period, it is a really difficult period. We never thought of that we will pass like a, this period. That is why today's topic is future perspective of COVID-19. What are the mental health issues? In fact, there are lots of mental health issues associated with our COVID-19 phases. Because there are main reasons, sir, of mental health issues are number one is uncertainty. We don't know how many people dies in it. Because you know, if you see the history, if you study the different evidence-based studies, then you can find it out that mortality rate is only two to four percent. This is not a very big threatening thing. But the threatening thing is that is its infectivity is very high. The mortality rate of 0 to 40 years is 0.2%. That means only 2 persons among the 1,000 patients are die, are going to die. So don't worry. The message is you should be alert, but don't be scared. And then regarding the future perspective, there are lots of things, lots of issues there. Not only the mental health issues, the economical issues, the interpersonal issues, all are very much impaired during this phase, during the social distance, for the social distancing, lockdown period, all are the main cause of leading to uh, which leads to mental health problems. So, as I said before, we have three eminent speakers, Dr. Joy Shastu, who is a consultant psychiatrist and senior psychiatrist and very active in different social works as well as in the mental health activities. He's one of the most sincere soldiers of Indian Psychiatric Society. Next is Dr. Abdul Majid. You know, he is also a very sincere most member of Indian Psychiatric Society. He is the Associate Professor of SKIMS Medical College, Srinagar, and very active and dynamic. And last but not the least, the most dynamic person of Indian Psychiatric Society, Dr. Ranjan Varchar, who is the HOD of the Department of Psychiatry, Murshidabad Medical College. I'm not taking much time. I request Dr. Ranjan Harchas to start with his presentation, the what are the psychological impacts of COVID-19 or coronavirus during this period. Please, Ranjan, Dr. Ranjan Harchas. Good evening, everybody. Am I brightly visible and loudly audible enough? Yes. Thank you. Yes, Thank yes, you sir. very much for your kind, generous, generous and affectionate introduction, Dr. Gautam Shah, Vice President, come President, elect of and past honorary general secretary of the Indian Psychiatric Society. At the outset, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the all the management committee members and faculties of the Techno India Group of Banipur. Uh, starting from 
Mrs. Manashi Raichodhuri, the co-chairperson, Mrs. Pa Pauline Laravuri, director of sustainability of the Techno India Group, Dr. Malaya Kumar Chandra, principal of Techno India Group, Mr. Shumanto Chatterjee, CEO, and the other most three young teaching uh, teaching faculties, the assistant professor, Mrs. Momita Chakraborty of Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Mrs. Shyantani Ghosh from the same department, and Mr. Shumadita Roy, of the assistant professor of the IT department, and he's also the president of the IIC. So as we all know that the coronavirus related problems are growing up. So we have now come across almost five months period and we have faced, we have watched, we have noticed lots of setbacks. We have experienced the longest lockdown ever. And right now, what, what actually happened and how it progressed, I would like to enlighten those facts. So you can see in this slide, you cannot, you are not reading, if you, are, if you do not know the Chinese language, you will not read out the, what is written here. So even after the almost five months, we do not know the, how much the impact of the COVID-19 is and how the SARS-CoV-2 has mutated its genomic structure in a, such a manner that, be, that it has resulted in so many, uh, so many phase problems across the world and it has now become the pandemic and it has crosses the, all the geographical boundaries. So I will initiate my presentation with some bit odd way, with some obituary, obituary about Dr. Li Wenliang. Dr. Li Wenliang was a Chinese ophthalmologist who worked in the Yuhan Central Hospital, which is located in the Hubei, Hubei provinces of the China, as we all know by this time, that he was on 30th December 20, 19, 2019, in the, uh, he, he reported to the Yuhan CDC that lots of mysterious cases of death uh, which was resulted with the pneumonia, some atypical pneumonia in the, which affected the Wuhan sea, seafood market. And he immediately reported this incident to the CDC. Lee received uh, various internal diagnostic reports of the suspected cases who were suffering from the severe acute respiratory syndrome, which is commonly known as SARS. And when he reported, and he published it in a WeChat private group and requested the confidentiality, but this news, deadly outbreak with the other social platforms. It has been shared in various platforms and ultimately Yuhan police summoned him and admonished him for making some false comments on the internet about the unconfirmed SARS outbreak. Lee returned back to his work and ultimately he contracted with the COVID-19 and unknowingly Lee then shifted from his home and resided in a hotel for the last few days and ultimately died on 7th February 22, 2020 at the age of only 33 years. So this begins like this. So he is the, probably the first whistleblower who raised the issue of this COVID-19 pandemic. As you know, the SARS-CoV-2 is a virus, the coronavirus has more than 200 uh, variation of which seven types of coronavirus can affect human being, and this is the seventh type of virus, the SARS-CoV-2. So the 59 suspected cases with the fever, dry cough has been reported. And as you know, this, was, this study had been published in the Lancet, in the Lancet on 24 January. The study had been done from uh, 1st January to 20th January. And then this report has been done that 41 patients were confirmed to be infected with the SARS-CoV-2. And if you can see the distribution, you can see the human seafood market exposure, the, their uh, past history of this exposure among the most of the patient when, when the market has been closed, the cases of this atypical pneumonia has fallen drastically. Now the COVID-19, when it affects a human being, the initially the incubation period of this SARS-CoV-2 is being two to 14 days, the average being the five to seven days. So incubation period is the point of entry of the organism in the human body and the development of the first signs and symptoms. So it takes around seven days. For the initial five to six days, the patient will remain asymptomatic. Then if he or she develop this infection and develop the disease, then it, it, the, the remaining 19% of the cases will present with symptom, symptoms and the, it may require the admission on the seventh day, the dyspnea or the respiratory distress will develop on the eighth day. 
if it progresses further then the acute respiratory distress syndrome will develop on the 9th and 10th and on the 10th day 10th day onwards the person will require to get admitted in the critical care unit so the mortality of these being 2% uh, but the infectivity rate is alarmingly high and it has been published in this study about the characteristics of these cases and the most of the patients presented with fever dry cough and shortness of breath some, some of the patient presented with atypical features in the form of confusion headache and one atypical features was the anosmia the person couldn't smell it out so that is olfactory nerve involvement the cranial nerve one and olfactory cranial nerve involvement and uh, anosmia has been found to be one of the characteristic features of the sars cov2 uh, you need not to be very particular about knowing this extra changes if you can go through the, on the left hand side on the right hand side you can see the patient develop the severe pneumonia on the left hand side chest x ray picture is pretty clear on the right hand side there is development of which what i call it technically as a ground glass opacity when the acute respiratory distress syndrome develops and it develops at a very very faster rate and patient will require ventilatory supports as i mentioned about the various clinical features there are typical respiratory symptom with fever cough and shortness of breath and majority of them will be the milder and will remain asymptomatic however the 15% will progress to severe cases requiring hospitalization among 3% will remain critical and almost 2% will die less than a quarter of cases experience severe illness and chinese authority reported that the death rate or the mortality rate is around 2% the as we know the virus it looks like this and it even it, even in past in 2002 there was an uh, outbreak of the coronavirus and that is known as a severe acute respiratory syndrome or sars virus and the host was uh, even being and the inter, the vector had been found to be the bat and on the mars the middle east respiratory syndrome it was found in the middle east countries and the vector was the camel it was the coronavirus found in animals and can infect the human genotic it has a beautiful structure it is an ss ss rna virus the virus can be divided into two halves there is a dna viruses and rna viruses and even they can be divided into further two halves there is single stranded and double stranded depending on the genetic material so it has a single stranded rna virus the sars cov2 and the important part of the sars cov2 is that the genetic there is 25% mutation of the genetic code now the global update as i found the worldometer just yesterday i have checked that fact facts and figures so you can see that almost 69 lakh 73427 cases with death around 4 lakh uh, 4 lakh plus deaths worldwide india ranking 6 probably have already reached fifth as per the figures available in the afternoon and total active cases in the india are 2 lakh 46 thousands and of which cured patient 1 lakh 18 thousand and total death till yesterday was around 7 thousand 10 thousand 480 new cases has been found yesterday and 297 new deaths in india as per the phylogenetic analysis it has been found that the infection started around the end of the november the south china morning post claimed that the very first person infected on the 17 november patient zero the index case was reported on 1st december first hospitalization admission was on 16 december now on the very last day of the last year when the new year eve this has been reported and the first public message was given in on 31st december yet who didn't announce it as a pandemic on the 23rd january in a executive committee meeting world health organization has informed that it said it has some serious concern but not at the level of public health emergency but on 31st january it has found the who declared it to be at public health emergency of international concern or phec and ultimately after 40 days almost one and a half months the who declared it as a pandemic india entered in this first uh, lockdown phase or first the uh, what you call as janta curfew was on 23rd march so there are some technical terms like outbreak endemic epidemic and pandemic outbreak is the sudden increase in occurrence of any illness in a particular time and place endemic is the constant maintenance of any illness for example the malaria is endemic in india so the constant maintain increase of occurrence of a disease in a particular geographical area 
epidemic is defined as a rapid and sharp rise of the disease in a large and affected large number of people in a population within a very very short period of time and it is called pandemic when it spread across the larger regions in the various for instance multiple continents or worldwide and it crosses the all geographical boundaries and i am just showing this slide it is the slide which is, which is dealing with the how the immunity develop and the how the we perform the rapid testing initially during the asymptomatic period the first antibody that appears in our body is the igm then i following a uh, following igm the igg antibody develops igm then comes to at peak level then gradually decline and this after decline uh, when the igm antibody level declines the period is known as convalence and the igg is the protective antibody once appeared in a human body then it will persist for the lifetime and by this we diagnose with various techniques which is first one of one of them is the most reliable one is the rt pcr the reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction and igm and igg antibody you can uh, go through the this chart that when the pcr is positive patient may have maybe in the window period that patient is remaining asymptomatic symptoms has not appeared when pcr and igm both are positive then it is on the early stage of infection when all three are positive the patient is on active phase of infection now the active case finding should be the call for the day we are now have entered in a certain phase when the phase three has already been started and this community spread has been a very very challenge for the epidemiologist and we need wider searches patients and their visitors in the healthcare facilities where confirmed patients sought treatment and healthcare providers who cared for the clean room and infected patients so it is a very important to get that get your testing done if you are exposed to a person who has been diagnosed to have covid 19 positive test then certain rules and protocols to be followed it is not recommended to go for the rt pcr test for all the all the uh, persons the healthcare worker who are there or the first degree relatives of the diagnosed patients or who have shared the shared the room with the person should go for the screening and the contact tracing is very important you can see in the diagram that identifying contacts and the infected patient is, is a serious challenge you have to go for the names contact demographic location date of first and last exposure date of onset when the fever or respiratory symptoms develop and the common exposure type of the contact and confirm and it is very very challenging for the part of the epidemiologist to go for the contact tracing now if you look for the look for searching in the internet in the google if you type the coronavirus and press enter the result you will find very little resemble to any other search now there are government regulations that they are in the initial period without having any government regulation regulations many fake news and false news were widespread and rampant in the social networks so government ngos and mainstream media sources now dominate and there is a fact checkers and gatekeepers all algorithms and user generated contents are now out and silicon valley has responded to the new new terminology which is known as infodemic so along with the pandemic we are now also facing a serious challenge of infodemic so coming to the unmasking the truth whether it is pandemic along with in infodemic is present or not so some news about the hundreds of pay, uh, person die in the iran over a false belief there was a belief that the alcohol if it is mixed with the honey and placed with placed in the mask then the covid 19 infection will never occur as you know iran is a very strictly religious country and the ethyl alcohol is not available is banned there so person use the methyl alcohol which is very very toxic and it has been mixed in the mask and even a case of a child of as little as to two year has been tried with some ipad mixed with some uh, methyl alcohol and honey which has resulted in blindness so more than 7280 people have died from the ingesting of the toxic methanol alcohol since february 20 there are various myth boosters going in the social media i'm just sharing few of the names and most of the fake news that italy surrendered very motivational speech given by the grd tata the fake news are spreading all over and the police has taken serious uh, offenses as per the it act and then know the three arrested for fake news on covid 19 of the epidemiology act and the it act so the what is going around the web about the various myths and what is the fact i just would like to share some of them that some myths said that adding paper to your soup or other bills will prevent the covid 19 it is no no way the best way to protect yourself is against the coronavirus 
is the at least maintaining the physical distancing of one meter or three feet as mentioned by the WHO and as mentioned by the CDC Atlanta, the distance should be around two meter or six feet. Uh, wash your hand on a frequent, frequent basis, taking at least 40 seconds as recommended by the WHO and also maintaining the cough etiquette and wearing mask and maintaining the balanced diet, stay well hydrated and do the physical exercises. There are currently no drug license to treat for the COVID-19 infection. There are uh, very whimsically the rumors were spreading and very much researchers uh, uh, claimed initially that the uh, hydroxychloroquine can be can be a very good weapon as in fact the president trump has ordered the hydroxychloroquine as you all know from india but the misuse of the hydroxychloroquine can cause serious side effects because each sequence can prolong your qt interval qt interval is an interval in your cardiac rhythm and if it is prolonged too dangerously then it can cause serious polymorphic ventricular tachyarrhythmia leading to death so who is coordinating efforts to develop and evaluate medicine and the prophylaxis to be given on the only for the healthcare providers. The other myth said that spraying and introducing bleach or other disinfected in the body. There is no scientific evidence of the, that this claim. In fact, these substances can be poisonous if ingested and it causes dermatological reaction in the form of irritation and it damage to your skin and eyes. Remember to keep the chlorine bleach or sodium hypochlorite and other disinfectants out of reach of the children. It could be very poisonous to them. There are other Myths like drinking methanol, ethanol, or bleach will prevent or cure COVID-19, and it is very, very dangerous. As, as I mentioned, the methanol is a very toxic element, and methanol, ethanol, bleach are sometimes used for cleaning products to kill the virus, the surface disinfectant. It should not be consumed, and one can only use the diluted bleach or alcohol for surface cleaning. And make sure you clean your hands frequently and thoroughly, and avoid touching your the face and mouth and eyes and nose. The other claims that if you can hold your breath for the 10 seconds, you will not be infected with the COVID-19. There is no such scientific evidence of this claim. The best way to confirm is by doing the laboratory test. RT-PCR is one of the most scientifically proven tests. We also advocate other tests like pooled antibody test for a economically deprived country to save our costs and to make it more fruitful. The most common symptoms have to look after and there is a history, if there is a history of exposure or contact with the COVID-19 positive cases or development of symptoms of dry cough, respiratory distress and fever, it is better to visit the nearest healthcare facility. The new coronavirus cannot be transmitted by the mosquito bite. In, initially, it has been claimed and people were really frantic about knowing that, that it, it, will be, uh, it will spread via the mosquito bite if the same person is sharing room who is COVID positive with other people. The others the claims or uh, myths are ultraviolet lamps are uh, very helpful, but it can cause very serious damage to your skin and your eyes. So it should not be used to disinfected hand or any other areas of the skin. It is best to use the soap. The ordinary soap will do. Otherwise, 70% alcohol-based sanitizers can be used. The vaccines are yet to develop. It will take around approximately one and a half to two years to come. The hip vaccine or hemophilus influenza vaccines or pneumococcal vaccine does not protect, it does not have the cross immunity with the COVID-19 because these are, uh, COVID-19 has some unique strain, a unique character of morphology in its uh, uh, DNA and it should be, uh, sorry, in its capsid and its genome. It requires a special specific vaccine to be developed but these trials are going on but it will take longer time. Now, garlic is no way helpful to prevent the infection. Rather, it can cause foul breath and it can may generate the other adverse consequences to your close ones. So it is of no help. The coronavirus affecting older people and younger people are safe. It is also no, uh, no point of justification. The COVID-19 has fatal outcome if there are comorbidities in the form of COPD, asthma, diabetes, heart disease and it appears to be more vulnerable and the children are mostly remaining asymptomatic and if they visit to their grandparents, then it has a high risk that from the asymptomatic children, the senior citizens will get affected. Other, uh, other myths are there, the clapping hands together can destroy virus as a lab bed. All are this uh, part of the infodemic which has spread in various social platform and search engines. 
Now, washing hand technique should be proper. These days, the hand washing, the most important weapon or armamentarium in our hand to prevent the COVID-19. And the other armamentarium, the use of mask, that most of the people are not covering their nose and mouth. It is hanging in their chin and is very, very pathetic because most of us should know that after, during this unlock one phase, we should practice this exercise in a rigorous manner. Hand washing should take around 40 seconds. If you can recall the song that happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you or twinkle, twinkle, little star, it will be sufficient to remember and wash your hand and the hand wash should go on from you, the nail bed to the wrist and to both sides, the palmar and dorsal surfaces of your hand with ordinary soap or the 70% alcohol-based sanitizers. The infodemic is very difficult to handle because WHO has launched the platform to com combat the misinformation by Jakotas and in WHO. As we know that immediately after when WHO declared it was uh, the COVID-19 as public health emergency of international concern, the AP Win network came into force. AP Win is the network for epidemic information of WHO. Sylvie Briand, the director of the infectious hazards management, told that we now we know that every outbreak will be accompanied by a tsunami of information, misinformation, and rumors. The Kuzmanovic, the social media manager of the WHO, told the, the Lancet that fighting infodemics and misinformation is a joint combined effort of the various social medias like Facebook, Twitter, Tencent, Pinterest, and TikToks. Google, Kuzmanovic noted that has created a SOS alert on the COVID-19 in the six official UN languages, and that uh, Dr. Tedros also informed that WHO using social media for real-time updates and WH is working in collaboration with the UNICEF and International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Society in risk communications. And WH Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus in the Munich Security Conference on the 15th February 2020 first declared that we are not just fighting an epidemic, but also fighting against an infodemy. And the AP win was launched for this and as when declared as the WH declared the PHEIC on 30th January. And the goal was to share customized information with the specific target groups. And you know, in the 30th January is also very important in our country. Uh, this, this is the day when the first three cases of the COVID positive found in Kerala. So we have to go for filtering of the whatever news are coming. False information can have can be of two times can be done for the as an intent or due to knowledge. The intent can be made due to following misinformation or disinformation, and knowledge can be opinion based and fact based. And social media, some examples of these infodemics are the CNN recently anticipated a rumor that possible lockdown of the Lombardy, which is located in the northern part of the Italy, to prevent pandemics. And when this rumor came into act, the people of the northern Italy part frantically rushed to the southern Italian part. As a result, the overcrowded trains and airports to escape the Lombardy towards the southern region during this lockdown phase. Another example was the hazard activity to improper health communication in the Nigeria. Even in India, one case has been reported that the family of the three, father of three, has been committed to uh, committed suicide. But this report has to be confirmed whether it is due to infodemic or due to some other reasons. Some of the intervention that we can do, the frontline healthcare providers should be equipped with the most recent research findings for accurate information. Mass media, community organizations, support groups should come into force together with the civil society. For this, it is necessary to build a strategic partnership at the local, uh, local global, regional, national level in a coordinated manner. All hoaxes and rumors should be removed from the all online platforms and social media and other online providers should adopt such measures to identify and eliminate potentially harmful disinformation, misinformation and rumors. And online portals and personal involved with the production and propagation of such information should be punished as per the provision of the law. So to stop the fake news, think twice, act wise, consider the source of information, read beyond this, check the author, check the supporting sources, check the date, whether is it made for the joke or not, check your own biases and ask the expert before spreading. We have a tendency to just share this information whenever we get it in our, in our smartphones to various platforms without verifying it. Now the role of the psychiatrist means, it was first reported in the April 3rd that Indian government is doing some counseling work by the psychiatrist during the lockdown period the psychiatric emergency and the mental health issues are happened to be following this pandemic, COVID pandemic in a larger way. 
the role of psychiatrists are multiple we are doing the routine opd and inpatient care on a regular basis we are training the fellow colleagues nursing professional for as for the psychological first aid or pfa psychological first aid to person in the quarantine center and in isolation wards also we are doing the pfa to the family members and relatives of the covid positive patients as well as we are managing the primary psychiatric disorder which are having relapses during these phases a stable patient of bipolar disorder or depression are relapsing in this phase of this as mentioned by you that panic disorders are also on a higher rate rates coming in our notice managing new psychiatric illness mostly the brief psychotic disorder acute stress disorders ptsd as are coming monitoring adverse drug reaction and the treatment emergent adverse effects of the various drugs and innovative part the not all are bad of following covid 19 on the 25th march 2020 the board of governor in supervision of the medical council of india in association with the niti ayog has passed uh, pass practice this ad advocated the telemedicine guideline which is now uh, gazetted on 12th may 2020 and telemedicine guideline is a reality now it has to be happen after uh, say 5 or 10 years down the line but covid 19 has accelerated and facilitated this people in the lockdown seeking consultation from the doctors and the telemedicine guideline has made their dream possible and it is the law of the land now psychological first aid is providing practical care needs for looking for their needs and concerns address basic needs as we go through the maslow's uh, abraham maslow hierarchy from basic needs to self actualization listening to people we are very good speakers but very few of our very good listeners we have to be very good listener with an empathic skill confronting people and helping them each other helping people connecting information and protecting people for further harm so mental health remained a divine during in pandem pandemic a new normal as mentioned has been a rule of the day we have to get well dressed eat new healthy recipes be creative stay connected do your regular nurturance hair up makeup breathe some fresh air unplug yourself from every time in the social media platforms and on the televisions reach out and mental health is always important but is especially important during times like these some of the photographs that everything is not has stopped pandemic the lockdown period nothing all things are not stopped the our gynecologist colleagues colleagues are doing their work some of the colleagues are doing the screenings the many people are coming from various places and these migrant laborers are coming in our districts in a huge number we are doing the series of lectures to just train our supporting staff the doctors the the paramedical staffs the nursing staffs the group test of all working in the covid hospital maintaining social distance this is a picture of our hospital just before uh, we have started the covid hospital and this is a patient in sari ward the severe acute respiratory infection ward he has recovered completely and it is one of the publication we have done as published in uh, just few days back in the indian journal of psychiatry we have done this survey of the attitude practice behavior and mental health impact on doctors we have comes we have taken the survey among the 152 complete responses in the uh, in a smart smartphone we have sent this questionnaire and we have found that of this 152 participant 34.9% of the doctors are depressed 39.5% having anxiety 32.9% are having stress so the frontline warriors are also suffering some mental health issue and uh, most important thing of the our study as we have found that 87% of the doctors feeling proud to be a covid warrior so unfortunately the most needy people who are looking for the personal protective equipment are not getting it now i think there some shortages has been resolved right now the stress during this phase can be of two types the positive stress and negative stress it goes like this semi this inverted u shaped curve which is known as york dotson law at at a if you can the, the students of the economics will know that it's a curve which is found in the that uh, as marginal cost and operational cost becomes equal so after this if you invest more it will be it will, you will incur losses so similarly certain amount of arousal or stress are beneficial it will increase performance but after certain level the break even point if you add more stress that there will be distress so distress is one of the types of stress that the mind and body undergoes a normal routine constantly adjusted and altered hypo stress is a lack of stress working in an under stimulating environment and hyper stress is a type of negative stress that comes when a person is forced to undertake or undergo more than he or she can do the job there are some reports about 
uh, in the news channel that two doctors, two lady doctors, Dr. Trupti and Dr. Jakya, went back on the 1st April in the area of the Indoor uh, just to go, go for the routine checkup and the thermal scanning. They have not been welcomed and the, the stones have been pelted on them. But these two ladies, hats off to them, have never given up and they come back again on the next day and ultimately these two lady doctors are motivated. So we shouldn't stop. There, there should be initial hardships and there are lots of stigmatization what will be in process. People are getting very much anxious for this misinformation, but we shouldn't stop our work. We should have to do our duties in a proper way. The lockdown phase is now, as we all know, the initial 21 days lockdown planned, then 21, 28 days with intervening five days period, 21, 28, 18 days model with each five days gap, or a single 49 day lockdown. But we cannot continue the lockdown for prolonged period. There are certain issues about the, our country's growth and development, the GDP is falling. So we have to go in the unlock one phase. But unlock one phase doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the COVID-19 has stopped. There are, if, in fact, almost a century back, similar Spanish influenza had done the same thing, Spanish flu in 1918-19. And the people had been in quarantine and suffered a lot. And more than 500 million people has been affected with the Spanish flu and 100 million died. So some routine procedures that we should follow that avoid touching the mask while using it. And the mask should be uh, wear in the proper manner. It should cover the face and nose, not found to be hanging in your in your chin. To remove the mask, it should be removed from the behind. Do not touch the front of the mask and discard immediately in a closed bin and clean hands with alcohol-based sanitizer or hand wrap. Now coming to the communicating with patient with suspected and confirmed COVID-19 is very important. We shouldn't ostracize or stigmatize the patient or the family members. Be respectful, polite, and empathic. Be aware that suspected and confirmed cases, the most important thing we can do to listen carefully in a local language and answer any question, clarification, or doubt from them. So initially we had been in the stage of fear that uh, we are doing, we are buying foods, we are buying toilet papers, we are buying medicines in a very, very huge number, huge banners. But we are not, then entered in the stage of learning. I start to let to go anything uh, that is out of my control. I identify my feelings of emotion and I'm able to cope with them. Then coming to the stage of growth, I think of others and will try to help them. I use my skills and allow others people to benefit from them. So we have now entered the stage of the growth and we have the, the phase that we should empower ourselves. The fear and coronavirus is quite, they have changed in the March, the coronavirus, uh, the COVID affected patients were less and the fear of corona is more. And the inverse has happened now, the corona number of corona cases are rising and the fear of corona has been dramatically reduced. Now coming to the various coping strategies, in, it's very normal to feel sad and stressed and depressed and overwhelmed. Talk to people and trust your counselor or the psychiatrist who is available, maintain a healthy lifestyle, do not use the adverse coping mechanisms like alcohol, smoking, or drugs to deal with the emotions. If you have to concerns, talk with your supervisor. And if you start feeling unwell, tell your doctor. So physical, psychological, and social care being the three important tools of the definition of health. That by WHO, health can be only possible with the physical, social, and psychological completeness. So eat rightly, stay hydrated, stay active, and sleep well. Take a good amount, Dr. good rest, catch up, moves, catch up with your sleep, but do not overdo it. Yes, I'm just Ranyan. concluding. concluding. Uh, yeah. Thank you. That nurture your relationship. Use this as an opportunity to foster family relationship. Connect with the friends and family members. Experience the joy of giving. The pleasure of giving is more than the pleasure of getting. And to look after the psychological well-being, take the charge. External condition may be beyond your control at this moment but situation inside the house are within your control. The personal growth, use this time to revive, strengthen your hobbies, do some research activity, learn a new skill, and this will make you feel good and also give you a sense of accomplishment. So the, my, my take home messages are, people who are affected of COVID-19 have not done anything wrong. Do not prefer those people as COVID-19 cases or victims or COVID-19 families. It is very much stigmatizing. Rather call them people who have COVID-19 or people who have recovered from COVID-19. Minimize watching, reading, or listening news. Protect yourself. Share stories of people who have recovered and honor carers and the healthcare worker. 
and just this situation will not go away overnight ensure the good quality of communication ensure that staffs are well aware of where and how they can access the mental health orient all responder manage urgent mental health and neurological complications and for the children help children find to their positive ways keep children close to their parents and family maintain familiar routines in daily life as much as possible older people may become more anxious angry stressed agitated and withdrawn so look after their issues and underlying health condition should be taken care of learn simple daily physical exercises and stay connected this is the telemedicine guideline that was talking about the various modes of communication can be video mode audio mode or text based most like apps sms chats so it's a very it's not only tough tough time that brings our true self uh, outside a lot of uncertainty is going around her it is not only the coronavirus which is highly contagious the infodemic about the coronavirus is also very contagious it's easy to start a cycle of fear threat misinformation stop doubt pessimism cynicism shaming fault finding and blaming others rise above religious national political or social differences try to be a role model and accept more and discriminate less so remember consider everybody around you as an asymptomatic carrier of covid-19 and capable of infecting you consider too that you yourself could be an asymptomatic carrier of covid-19 capable of infecting all around you so train yourself by using all your intelligence to neither get infected nor infect others the a to z of coronavirus avoid crowd be aware of fake news clean your hands don't go out so and so forth and stay away from the fake news i have been hearing so many conflicting news and theories that i develop instead of herd herd immunity the hard or listening immunity i have developed thank you very much the three letters one digit and one symbol of this person which has revolutionized the concept of science i adore you sir isaac newton thank you very much thank you so much sir thank you sir yeah dr ranjan vachya ji it was an excellent presentation very good deliberation and you almost cover everything about the covid 19 infection and what to combat this situation what to do from a doctor and from a lay person at least what to do and we have done wonderful job hello can you hear me and the next yes sir yes sir yes sir go ahead uh, next sir. is professor joy shastri he is already i introduced him i am not, i don't want to take much time he is uh, one of the most brilliant psychiatrists of indian psychiatric society monisha singh so uh dr joy shastri please proceed okay let me just start my share screen mm. Just give me one or two moments. I'm just uh, trying to share my presentation. Is there anybody uh, who can share presentation on my behalf, or I can I can Ranjan? I can share. No, it's a uh, no, it's a yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can I can I share? Yes, please, if you can. Okay, okay. But okay, then uh, we'll okay. Jai, if you go to the bottom, you will see this. Uh, see that share content is there. Right, sir. I'm uh, able to see the share content. My and only you, thing I'm. You click there. Okay, Achha, yeah. it is sir, done. Can you, already can, already you done. can you uh, see my screen, sir? Yes, I can. I can. I can. I can. so it's always a great pleasure and when you have the department of computer science uh, organizing the thing you can't uh, expect any technical glitches uh, we as psychiatrists have uh, difficulties always 
or rather at times getting through this uh, technical problems am i am i visible and audible yes sir okay. absolutely okay great great so it's it's great pleasure uh, thank you so much to the techno india group and computer science department all the faculties dignitaries uh, gautam da uh, ranjan boss and uh, also dr majid will be speaking after me uh, it's a great pleasure on this uh, sunday evening to be addressing such a august ga gathering and the topic which is given to me is about exam stress and uh, i'm sure everybody must have felt at some point in time uh, this kind of feeling uh, and uh, this is something which is not uh, unknown to anybody after listening to ranjan's uh, topic about uh, covid and science it's more about soft skills and this is something which is equally important uh, that we understand what stress is especially pertaining to exams and how to deal it to certain extent because if if we are aware what is happening within us i think the outcome outcomes can be much much uh, better so uh, if we try to understand exam stress in nutshell it's primarily about excessive worrying uh, of the upcoming exams when we have some sort of examinations uh, coming our way and when we start worrying about it when we start thinking about it how the papers are going to be uh, formed and how the preparation is it enough is it enough to give me some uh, some kind of good grades is it good enough for me to go further in life so that's something which always is there in our mind when we uh, think about exams and also uh, along with that there is a very strong fear about being evaluated so when when we start uh, associating exams with our own identity when we start associating exams as as what we are that's when the fear of evaluation uh, chips in so that almost becomes what what you are as an individual and that's the last thing that you want as a student uh, of course then there are other things like uh, uh, apprehensions about consequences what people will think about me what uh, society will think about me what my parents will think about me whether i'll be part of the same friend circle which i have been because i'm sure when you have the social circle uh, your academic performance also is one of the criteria to get in and out of the social circle so that's that's a kind of rude but then reality and that's something which is always there on one's mind when we are appearing for exams so imagine how many things goes through our mind when we are talking about exams next slide please and when when does it start i think it starts right from the day one of college it uh, it starts when you are filling up the examination form you want to make sure that it is perfect there is no error of any kind you have written uh, about uh, the subject preferences especially from engineering point of view uh, when when there are semesters and there are different subjects being offered you want to make sure that the form filling is a thorough process without any issues and there are periodic tests which are being conducted so that's something which also is a part of this examination stress that we experience uh, day in and day out and uh, when you realize the exam is just round the corner the final exam is round the corner that's when the heart start beating a little more faster when you receive your permission letter or your hall ticket that uh, uh, in, in certain states that's called and that's where the the beating become fast and you realize that now i i have to appear for exams there is no other way out uh, and the day before the same day when we enter the examination hall when we are awaiting our question paper the anxiety or the stress we feel almost all throughout that process so it's there within us around us and we feel it almost each and every aspect of uh, our our student life next slide please so uh, just to clear this concept about examination stress i think it's very very important for us to understand that there is something known as normal anxiety and as uh, ranjan also talked about that inverted bell shaped curve anxiety at certain level always always helps you in picking up the performance uh, can i have one more click please uh, momita right so uh 
when when you have anxiety which is normal it helps you to increase concentration it helps you increasing your speed it also helps in increasing the output and ultimately results in increasing the performance so it leads to a productive outcome so that's something which is very important for us to understand you want to well, you don't want to just lie low or uh, lie uh, uh, just relax and not do about things and this is something which is very important as a student uh, uh, as a person who is appearing for any sort of exam to not go into uh, a mode where you, where you feel that oh it's still 6 months away it's still 4 uh, uh, months away i have a lot of time in my hands so that's one mindset that you always have to stay away from and you have to make sure that each and every minute that you have in your in your hand you make the most of it so this is something which comes out when you have a normal stress normal anxiety it's extremely productive next slide and exactly opposite to that is something which is known as abnormal stress abnormal anxiety and this particular anxiety leads to forgetfulness it leads to something known as autonomic activity it's a scientific term where you feel that uh, butterflies in your stomach the heart thumping very strongly your breathing is become very very fast and that is something when uh, when we see the 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 anxiety has gone to the other extreme it starts in a way destroying you it becomes almost counterproductive so this is as a concept is very important for us you don't want to be too much complacent you don't want to be uh, too much negative you have to be somewhere in between where you are feeling anxiety in the right proportion stress in the right proportion and that becomes a productive kind of anxiety for you can we move further madam so what are the signs i think there are certain signs uh, that one can realize and understand and if you are aware about them i thought uh, it's it's very important for us to uh, mention this uh, and because you can help yourself you can also help people who are around you who is going through a similar uh, a turmoil similar issues so there are certain physical signs you see people with anxiety or stress being little fidgety uh, they are restless moving here and there uh they they are uh, just flipping through the books uh, and the pages just like that uh, not been able to focus and concentrate in a very very strong way they also show uh, certain behavioral signs of anger irritability being uh, not been able to tolerate noise uh, very easily uh, not, not been able to uh, uh, connect with uh, with other people especially when they are under stress and when it goes beyond a particular point you also start seeing the emotional signs where uh, extreme negative uh, thoughts uh, crying spells you also see them talking about uh, uh, various negative things also to an extent of uh, ending life and this is something which is not unknown to us during our uh, uh, when, when we are in the period of february march when the boards are uh, coming up and now you have exams practically for almost all the faculties throughout the year so when, whenever there are uh, exams happening semester exams happening that's where you see this uh, as a very very common occurrence we get the calls on a regular basis where people have this kind of emotional excellent student there is no issue as far as the intellect is concerned there is no issue as far as uh, uh, the preparations are concerned but it's just that emotional a bonding emotional uh, strength with, uh, which one requires to hit that six of the last ball and that's where uh, children give up so it's very important that we realize and recognize this point very very early and uh, try and uh, treat them and i, I was i was really happy uh, when uh, one of the uh, speakers uh, early on from or the faculties uh, who who just mentioned about being aware of mental health issues creating an environment in the institute because talking about mental health is just one aspect of it but when you you know, when you create that environment push which is required so and at times i think that's the only thing people just want to express themselves they just want to come out with their problems and just just make sure that there is somebody who is listening at that at times they don't need any further help so this is something which is very very important can i have one more click uh, uh, momita and Uh, there are also uh, certain cognitive signs can i have one more click momita mm -hmm. sorry i have kept you busy 
Momita. Hello. Yeah. Okay. So there are also yes. cognitive Next slide, science. Please. Yeah. There are certain cognitive uh, cognitive science which we have to remember because when when you have extremely stressful situations, that's when you also start uh, uh, forgetting things because uh, as it's known to the uh, human science brain cannot have two different emotions. You can't be angry and happy at the same time. You can't be uh, sad and uh, joyous at the same time. So if you are anxious, your memory is going to suffer and that's definitely not the emotion that you want at, at, at the time of appearing for exams. So what are the other causes? There are ob obviously pressure to succeed because uh, you want to do well in life, nothing wrong with that, but that definitely creates some sort of anxiety. The, the opposite of that, you, you don't want to fail. But what, what is important that uh, you have to understand your own capacity. You have to know your own caliber. And that's where people probably lose uh, this battle. Because if you, if you are aware what, what you are capable of and you work with those resources, you work with those limitations, you work with those abilities, then I'm sure the fear of failure will never strike you. And this is again something which is... Uh, uh, the current rat race of everybody getting an A. I don't know what, what's so important about this particular alphabet, A. As if Z has no importance or B has no importance. So A is something which is there on everybody's mind. And uh, uh, if you ask me what I have scored in my 10th standard uh, uh, chemistry uh, subject, I don't know. I don't know that uh, score. So I, I think it, it's, it's not about uh, scoring A's in all the subjects. But how you score A in your life is something which is very, very important. And that will come only if you are a confident person and not somebody who, are, who is, who is, who is uh, only successful in academics. Can I have the next slide? So these are the other causes of exam anxiety. Obviously, the irrational and negative thinking adds on to the exam anxiety that, oh, I'll not, uh, I'll not pass. It's a difficult exam. It's some, uh, some, the, the teacher is extremely strict. So that's something which is there in every, he, he never passes anybody. So forget about it. So these are certain irrational negative thinking, which uh, makes you more anxious and not uh, allow you to give you a hundred percent. Next slide, please. Why do I have an ex exam anxiety? Obviously there might be some past failures which come and haunt you. Next. You, you might be working with little uh, low self-esteem and that can be one of the reasons why you might have exa exam anxiety. Next, attitude needs adjusting. So at times what happens is that you, you take things for granted and that is the last thing that you want. People always complain that I could not study and that is something which I cannot understand as a, as a, as a mental health professional because I think there is ample number of time given to you. And if you, if you give this as an excuse that I could not study, I lack uh, enough opportunity or time is something which is, which is the, I think, the, the meanest excuse that anybody can give to themselves. And that probably is a problem of attitude and uh, that needs to uh, get, uh, need some sort of adjustment to stay away from anxiety. Obviously, lack of preparation is something which is always there. You need to approach this particular aspect of life more structured rather than just going with the flow. So if you go with the flow, it's always difficult. You need to put some sort of structure when you are preparing for exams to give, uh, to be uh, uh, staying away from the anxiety. Next. So who, who is affected? I'm sure everybody at some point in time, some uh, on a scale of one to 10 might experience uh, uh, at, at the level of one or two, some might uh, experience at the level of 10. But then everybody does. But those students who see exam as a threat has 100% of chance uh, of experiencing anxiety. And also they, uh, there might be some sort of past failures which might result in them experiencing some sort of anxiety. But every, every student, to some extent, less or more, does experience anxiety. But how much it affects your performance is something which is more important and pertinent here. Next. Next slide, please. So uh, it's, it's all about effective studying because that, that's what it boils down to. Uh, what, what do you know on that particular day? How you get your stuff out? But 
uh, at the same time, what you need to remember, it's not about cramming or study because as you know, when you go higher up, once you are out of your school, in the college, in professional uh, studies, you know, cramming is completely out of uh, question. And also I've seen a lot of students working hard, putting on long hours, but not getting the results. And that's where study smart becomes very, very important. And that study smart, as I've mentioned earlier, requires some sort of planning and more than planning, better execution. Can I have the next slide? I think mindset is very, very important. How you, uh, how you understand the study mindset, how you improve your study mindset is, is something which is very, very important. And it starts with this particular question. Tell yourself, why are you doing study? So that's something which is very important for you. Are you doing it for degree? Are you doing it, doing it for your parents? Are you doing it for somebody else to prove something to somebody else? Are you doing it uh, because you want to gain knowledge? So if, if uh, gaining knowledge is at the, at the top of it, I'm sure you have won uh, half the battle and it's just about the execution less. So study mindset becomes very, very important. Be positive and be aware about your abilities. So that's something which is uh, uh, utmost important because unless and until you, I, I can't expect Harbhajan Singh to come and bowl fast out swingers because he is a spinner. So your ability has to be known to you and that's something which uh, lays the uh, uh, foundation on which you can build your success story. Avoid negative thinking. It's very, very easy. Every human mind wanders away. Start thinking negative. You have to make sure that you avoid negative thinking. Give yourself a chance to improve because that's something which is, again, very, very important. I've seen so many students who are excellent, but they kill themselves in self-criticism. That is something which you should be staying away at all the point in time. It's human to make mistakes. You please make sure that every error should not be criticized to a level that you destroy yourself. So again, I've seen this uh, often and that's why I'm sharing this story with you uh, that even if you have done not done well in certain aspects, that's perfectly fine. Be confident. Do not uh, uh, lose your confidence at any point in time. And at least... Uh, as, as, a, as an individual, do not compare yourself with anybody else. If somebody else compare, is their problem, but then at least you should not compare yourself with anybody else. That's something which is very, very important. Appreciate the effort. Again, very important that whatever you get, whether it is uh, uh, 15 on 20 or 20 on 20 or 10 on 20, you should always appreciate yourself. And that will give you that boost, that, uh, uh, that energy which is required to perform better in the next time out. Can I have the next slide, please? Preparing for exams, again, uh, very important. As I've told you, it's, it's all structured or planned. How you, how you make a business successful, how you make your personal life successful. Like that, exam needs to be approached in a more structured way. And these are certain tips which I want to share with you. How, what you are supposed to be doing before, uh, or rather when preparing for exams, just before exams, during exams. So we'll just go through them uh, quickly. Organize your post material and supplies. Very, very important. I've seen students last minute struggling for where is this book? Where is that uh, notes? It's something which can make you more anxious and kill your creativity. So make sure that you have everything available to you, uh, yourself as early as possible. Revision, very important because more you revise is easier to remember. Break studies into sections. You can't study for long hours. You have to break also the study or the subjects into different sections so that the, uh, the memory or the recall becomes very, very important. Think of, uh, about the most important topic and what questions might be asked. Past question referral is, is one of the important exercises. I advise to all the students who come to me for counseling that you have to make sure that you are uh, reading past uh, papers and uh, getting some uh, common questions out of them because that's going to uh, help you. Almost 70% of questions are repeated. That's what my experience is. Practice sitting for same number of hours. In fact, we ask them that whatever time uh, your exams are scheduled, say if it is uh, from 2 in the afternoon till uh, 4 in the evening, make sure that that 2 to 4, you don't do anything and just write for those 2 hours because that's how you train your brain. That's how people train their brain for different activities. So that's something, again, it is very important exercise write as many papers as possible. And when you're studying, 
make sure that it's a quiet, comfortable place. If it's a struggle, but then make sure that there are less number of distractions. So that's something which is, uh, which is to be kept in mind because more you remain focused, more uh, you will be able to get results out of yourself. Next slide, please. Before exams, uh, make sure that you have prepared well for the, for the exams. Bring the supplies that you need to write exams. At the last moment, again, you don't want to run Helter Shelter to bring different things. Make sure that you have good night's sleep. I think Madam Co-Chairman mentioned about sleep and uh, eating good food. I'm so happy that people are thinking about basics because that's something which probably you, 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 uh, you take so much in your routine that people do not think about. So having a good night's sleep and having a full stomach is something which is very, very important to crack exam and also to stay away from anxiety, stress. Relax your mind and uh, uh, using stress management techniques, there are different techniques. The easiest being the deep breathing technique, just take deep breaths four or five and immediately the autonomic hyperactivity that, that I just described about earlier settles down. Reach before exam time, very important. You don't want to be running into the examination hall where the bell is already rung. But at the same time, don't be too early for uh, other anxious students to distract you. So there are always troublemakers around. So make sure that you stay away from them. And as much as possible, avoid any last minute reading. Because at times I've seen people going through the notes on a, on a very high level, but that normally doesn't help. Next slide. During exams, make sure that you are comfortable uh, in terms of your sitting position because you have to sit for at least two, two and a half, three hours. Very important, please listen to oral instructions. Don't try and dis get distracted by talking to uh, people around. Please make sure that oral, because at times after finishing those two hours, you suddenly realize that uh, there are so much, some instructions which are important, but you missed. Read the exam paper completely. Review the math system and divide your time accordingly. And most important, number the answers correctly because at times we might, be, might, have, we might have written the right answer, but if you have not numbered it correctly, the examiners do not have that much time. They have a lot of work to do. So you have to make their work very, very easy. Next slide. Again, during exams, if you have an essay type questions, break them, break them down into dot pointed plan that what are the four or five points that you want to cover even in the essay type exams multiple choice questions it's generally generally seen that your first sentiment is always right so don't try and change your answers unless you are extremely sure about it because that's something which is going to be the way of future even appearing for uh, even entering into professional courses we have to uh, go through multiple choice questions so that's um, one skill which we which you have to develop if you start to panic and anxious, practice those deep breathing techniques. Take two or three minutes to relax because again, if the anxiety builds up, you might not be able to perform well. So it's better that we allow ourselves to relax. We have got so many cases where people have fainted. They have uh, they've just uh, lost control. They've got blank. And if you want to avoid all those things, just allow yourself to relax and you will not go blank. Leave time for revision at the end. Always good. Might not be possible always, but then it's, it's always a, a, a good time, a good thing to have some sort of time. Don't leave early. If you have time, just be seated. Always, always, always. This is something which I tell to all the parents and students, no postmortem. Once you are out of the examination hall, that exam is over. It's a question of pass. You are not discussing that at any point in time. And as we have discussed, reward yourself regardless of the outcome. Next, please. So uh, I think this is one of the techniques which I al uh, always uh, tell students to use uh, mnemonics. Uh, and this is your mnemonic before you sit for exams. It's called test. Uh, if you can just go through the, uh, if you can uh, click further. T is for teach yourself positive talk. Exercise or do some, something that you enjoy every day. And this is one aspect which I feel is very important. I always get... Uh, uh, interested in knowing about how successful students uh, have managed their uh, marks or managed their life. And I always read the columns which come in the newspaper. And if you will see invariably, 
10 out of 10 students would say that I also played cricket. I also danced. I also uh, uh, spent time with my family, which is your me time. You enjoy and get, that gives you the energy, that gives you the positivity, which, which is required to perform well in, in your exam. So that E is, again, very, very important. We almost uh, ignore it. As I've told you, study smart. T is a very important part of study smart. Support your belief with evidence you tell yourself by, by giving the performance and talk to others about your feeling. Again, this is something which is most difficult part, but then if not now, then when? So you have to make sure that you come out with your feelings. If there is any uh, sense of help which is required, then it can be given to you. Another mnemonic, next slide please. Final two, success during test, stay focused on the test, use breathing exercise to calm if you're feeling anxious, see, come to test on time, see, create a plan for answering questions, E, execute whatever you have planned properly, S, stay active, if you go blank, don't stop there, move on, just take one or two minutes to relax, but move on, I think that's something which is very, very important, and uh, the final S is to stop having negative self-talk with positive affirmations. I can do it. It's just an exam. It's not life. This is something I, I'll always get an opportunity. And that's something which we always have to remember. Next slide, please. So the mantra of success to beat the exam anxiety, you have to make sure that you are calm. You have to make sure that you are stress-free. Whatever pointers that I've given you earlier, please put them in, in your uh, mind and make sure you, you execute them as much as possible. And if you are working on them regularly, then I'm sure success is just around the corner uh, if you can have. And next is my final slide, but just a, a, a small mention about uh, the current scenario COVID-19. And uh, here I would say that uh, life will throw a lot of uh, googlies to you. And it's, it's always you who has to decide uh, that how you play that googly. You see that as an opportunity to hit a six or you get stumped. And I see as a student, if I, if I were a student, I see this as a great, great opportunity because I, I, I have a lot of uh, positives. I'm not spending too much time traveling. I'm not... Uh, uh, doing any any other uh, I don't have any other distractions I'm in a comfort of my home so I see that as a good positive and make sure that I, I study well plan well relax at the same time and come out triumph in the exams just uh, uh, that that I'm going to appear thank you all for patient hearing and I hand over the mic to Dr. Saha thank you sir thank you sir thank you Jai it was really excellent deliberation. In fact, the practical tips, what you have given just now, it will definitely help all the students. And we also convey the, what messages you have given right now. And thank you for excellent deliberation. Dr. Joy Shastri is from Mumbai. Now the next speaker is from Srinagar. Wow. One of the most active and academician, Dr. Abdul Majid. We are waiting for his lecture and we are already running short of time. So I don't want to waste time much more. Dr. Majid, please. Yes, sir. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Gautam Dada is a uh, teacher, he is a patron, he is a mentor, and he is a dada uh, of mine. So we had uh, wonderful speakers uh, in the form of uh, Ranjan and uh, Jay, both my good friends, and uh, one, would, one would call that they are uh, Sachin Tendulkar from Mumbai and uh, Saru Ganguly Dada from uh, Kolkata. So I am following at number three. A difficult for me to fit in their team somehow, but I will try my level best to do it. And uh, the thing, the topic that has been assigned to me is about uh, our 
younger brother, I would say, who are on the panel, I would like first of all to thank everybody in the panel, uh, the madams, and I could see, I was really proud father of my daughter today that I could see on the panel, a uh, good number of females heading various specialties and uh, the institution and a young female who has um, qualified from Paris. Uh, lovely ladies all around and uh, it's always a pleasure uh, to be there uh, with the uh, people who have uh, achieved uh, in their life, particularly the ladies uh, around us. So uh, the uh, smartphone and internet, one would, I would call it for our panel who were there and who have been talking so far. Uh, it is our elder, uh, it's our younger brother, in fact, who were born before it. Uh, and uh, for those people who are actually listening right now, who are the participants are mostly between around, would be around between 19 to 25 years of age. Uh, the students from various colleges across India, as uh, the madam said in the initial remarks, we have uh, almost from every uh, state, we have students. And uh, this internet and smartphone is your younger brother. So not only finishing there, I think it has become our dadaji, in fact. It is controlling our home. And for, for boys, it has become a girlfriend because she controls you. And for uh, girls, it has become your boyfriend because he controls you. So smartphone and internet has taken over everything. It has, it is, as I said, it's your dadaji, it's your girlfriend, it's your boyfriend, it's your everything. Okay. So as I said that it is your younger brother and uh, it is your, uh, it's our elder, it's our younger brother and your uh, elder brother. It was born in 1992, first came in US and Europe and then subsequently to Asia and India. So it's a, it's a magic, some magic in your hand. Most of the times it's these days a five inch uh, pocket phone uh, and which has, I would say absolutely, you cannot live without it. And um, let me tell you that, uh, uh, everybody is using it these days. It's a great usurper, usurper rendering everything. You can read newspaper, you can have music player, you can have actual human interaction the way we have are having right now with you. So I'm staying in Srinagar, I'm staying in Kashmir. It's very, uh, I, I won't say cool, but it's comfortable outside. It may be very hot in Mumbai and Kolkata and other places around India. So we are in touch through this medium and it is only through this internet and smartphone that we are connected to each other. So people embrace smartphone. I, I may tell you that this is the gadget which has a wide, wide uh, coverage all over the world. And it has been um, able to manage a trillion dollar industry all over the world, a huge, huge industry right now. So earlier, they would say that smartphone and internet, even our times when Swiss started in, I think I was, I, we got smartphone and in, in uh, GNTN 2004, five and uh, internet as well. It was a luxury with very few people around uh, holding uh, smartphones and internet. And now by, I think down the line, next 15 years till 2020, the year we are living in, it's as if you are availing electricity, you have a TV and a refrigerator at home, you have automobiles in your, uh, at your path and you have every electronic gadget like that gadget it is. So it is no longer a necessity. Uh, it's no longer a luxury, it's a necessity now. So why do people use mobile phones? One is that uh, we understand that young people most of the times go for social networking, we communicate, we talk to each other, we talk to friends, we talk to families, we talk to our uh, anybody in the remotest corner of the world, we talk to them. We use it for banking as well. Everybody knows that uh, we pay bills and we transfer money to our kids who are outside. Uh, we book our tickets, even if we get late to airport and we miss our flight on that uh, button, we put the, uh, our cell phone on and we book the next flight within two couple of hours, which was a tedious job before. If uh, those people who are on the panel, they will understand it, booking a ticket before and uh, booking a ticket right now. It's absolute, complete change. Uh, we update our knowledge, we even read from, we read books, we read literature from the smartphone as such and from the internet. We check uh, on other activities, on others activities. Somebody is doing something, he might uh, um, along with uh, his friends uh, adjacent to the Eiffel Tower and he uploads it on the Facebook or uh, other uh, um, uh, medias and you know that what he is doing or somebody is even, they put on the, their photographs of uh, having something in the restaurant and some people watch pornographic material as well. 
So how do children use it? Particularly you are college going uh, people who are uh, the participants right now in the seminar. Uh, you know where school activities, uh, nothing else to do to give time to the parents and to avoid socialization. Uh, socialization physically, you also play games as well. So what has COVID given to this mobile phone and internet? It has given an innovation. COVID has got all negatives to, our, uh, uh, to this humankind, but it has somehow contributed. This has provided an opportunity. Uh, the teachers on the panel would agree with me. They would be taking online classes, which was a rarity before March 2020. Hardly had uh, online classes. Now online classes is sort of a routine and everybody is taking it every day almost. You have webinars like we have today and our Indian Psychiatric Society and other societies, doctors, engineers, professionals, politicians, bureaucrats, they actually get connected these days through online. And then another important thing for us doctors is the telemedicine and telepsychiatry, which is exclusively on this mobile phone and uh, internet. So who are the users of the smartphone? You can see laptop, you have the smallest child who is six months of age. He doesn't know how to suck milk from the bottle, but he knows how to put fingers on the smartphone and scroll it and look for the best audio or video, uh, this uh, uh, whatever they want to see the videos on that. And you have adults and boys and girls on the phones, you have then young adults, then you have your Dadaji and Nanaji also on phone, although they are most of the times guided on this phone by the, the, the younger ones, the grandchildren. Uh, but there is a thin line. Let me tell you, we're talking about good things about phone, that it uh, gives us a lot of liberties. It makes us quick. It connects us. But there is a thin line between use, misuse, and addiction of this magical device. And most importantly, my dear students, my dear uh, panelists, that we don't know when we start using it and when, when we start misusing it and when we, when we get Edited. There's a very, very blurred line between the three because it provides you so much of pleasure and you never know you are into it and you are unfortunately misusing it or you are addicted to it. Hence, there is a need to have a brief overview of uh, smartphone addiction or internet issues related uh, problems in our setup. The reason is that uh, these days, even God forbid, our house is on fire. Uh, uh, the spouse at home will say the child was not actually giving the phone. Otherwise, I would have called fire service. So she preferred to give the uh, crying child the phone to calm him down rather than calling fire service to douse the fires that, uh, is, uh, that, that, that the house is on. So the problem is big. Uh, there are a lot of smartphones all around the world. and. Uh, as you see that around there are 3.5 billion users in 2019 worldwide and our population if most of you might be knowing world population is around 7.6 7.7 billion so half of them are actually using uh, these smartphones and in india i would say that uh, i think the smartphones outnumber the toilets we have we have around 400 uh, million uh, smartphones that means 40 crore we have 130 a crore of population and 40 crore of uh, these smartphones. So how do we define actually problematic uh, phone use or internet use? It's a compulsive use. One is generally we use, we can call each other, we even access the material, we book our tickets, we go for banking, uh, we go for reading, we look for the literature, that's fine. But once you go and we even play the games and but once you come using it, you understand that you don't want to use it, but your inner tells you no i need to use it and to a maximum uh, period of time is consumed of the day even during the night people use it and this causes significant impairment in an individual's functioning that means he may at times skip meals or he may defer his meals he may he may not be able to sleep properly he may keep awake whole night and he will be busy with the internet he may have the social relationships, the family relationships. He may not sit with family. He may not go to see his friends. He may skip even the school and he gets compulsively uh, used to using the smartphone and the internet. And we understand that smartphone users have grown over the period of time. And we have a lot of smartphone users all around the world, as I said. 
and once you have a smartphone you are bound to go into the internet and you have www the three triple w's it was earlier for wrestlers but now it is for internet uh, everybody is going into this www so you can see here that uh, the india is on the top right now and uh, we have 70% of smartphone users who use exclusively internet from their smartphones and in the bottom of this is germany only 4% of germans use smartphones for their internet they actually use internet uh, from their desktops laptops or other gadgets but in india it's absolutely reverse and 70% indian population means it is very huge almost 300 million uh, smartphones uh, phone users actually use uh, mobile this uh, internet so if you talk about uh, Indian internet users and English internet users. English is gray and uh, Indian is saffron, orange. So if you see that in 2011, we only had 42 million. We were lesser than the rest of the world or English users uh, using internet on our phones. But down the line, it is projected that by next year, we will have 536 million mobile internet users. That is huge, quite huge. So growth of internet users versus mobile net users, those who are using internet on mobile and on other gadgets. You can see from 2012 to 2016, the internet users on other gadgets, that's the orange, has almost remained the same from almost uh, March to June 2015, almost 462. But if you see internet, uh, mobile internet users, that's in blue, it has significantly increased over the period of months in 2016 and it is ever increasing till date. And Facebook, everybody is aware of, and you can see the Indian scenario, it is red because uh, it's a red signal for all of us, for the participants also, because we spend most of the time scrolling on the Facebook, whatever uh, friends are doing across the borders and uh, in the remotest part of the world and 22.1 million, it has raised from 14.9 million, almost 50% jump. Although Brazil sidewise is shown as 92%. But if you compare, India has risen from 14.9 million to 22 million. Brazil, 7 million to 13 million. So in absolute terms, India is far, far ahead of using Facebook and it's a huge market for Facebook uh, use. Another very important study, let me tell, and I, I, I tell my students, I hope that most of them are right now uh, uh, with us. And uh, I tell you uh, clearly that uh, out of the, there was a study which was conducted among the 1000 college students who were aged of your age, 16 to 22 years, 75% almost were found to be moderate users, maybe like you, me and everybody. And 24.8% were possible addicts, very, very threatening and 0.7 were addicted to internet. So, they were, there was a lot of dependence and there was a lot of issues because of these addicted internet users. Another research I would uh, share with you that 61, 34% of students used internet after the age of 12. That means that they started their internet use after 12 years of age, but there was significant portion who had started 38.66% before the 12 years of age. Another uh, observation from the study was that almost one fourth of the students, 25, 26% spent four or more hours on the internet daily, on the smartphone daily. 30% of the students in this study admitted that their schoolwork was often delayed or incomplete because they would spend most of the time on internet and they acknowledged late uh, for their homework or their schoolwork was incomplete. So another uh, study, 11.8% students had internet addiction. 
one more study was there that more than half that means 53% of participants had moderate internet addiction and 7.7% had severe internet addiction so this is a warning sign for all the people who are right now on the panel who are participating in this this gadget i told you is dada ji nana ji and everything for us but it 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 was it is hum urdu mein kahenge isne hamari maa behan kar di hai so facebook the eternal favorite do you know what it has done to us we have in india more than 250 million we have crossed to 40 million my facebook users and we have surpassed even us so we are topping here also the gadget that was given the internet that was given by china every uh, almost every other phone that is an indian is holding comes from china and unfortunately china i would say it is nowhere here but unfortunately india is everywhere as far as the negative part of uh, smartphone and uh, internet is concerned more than half of the country's active users are below the age of 25 so most of the people are in your age group who are the participants right now and at the same time we have 83 million fake users the statistics otherwise also will surprise you i have not deliberately included whatsapp because whatsapp has its own university in every college and a uh, school of our uh, this uh, country we have a lot of people who use whatsapp these days i have not included that data that would become a huge huge embarrassment for all of us there are an average of 8 billion daily video uploads uh, on facebook 100 million video watches uh, in a day and 300 uh, million uploads of photo and other things per day so once you are so much engrossed with it there are a lot of things happening on whatsapp on facebook on internet on gaming on other uh, um, those non relevant things which you actually don't need you will have symptoms you will have distress you will have a lot of things which will be very negative for you so they can be in the form of behavioral symptoms uh, you feel avoiding the work i am now tired i have been i brained internet and gaming and all things i have drained me you become very agitated you have mood swings you fear as well you have loneliness yaar ab main bahar nikla nahi ab main kya karu i just want to stay in my room i think i have been staying all day let me stay more you have boredom with routine tasks you don't and feel enjoying now other tasks uh, you have procrastination you have depression you have dishonesty you feel guilty also that why did you use it for such a long long time you have a, you are anxious you have feelings of euphoria in between you win a game online you have pubg you had the blue whale you have so many games right now you play with your friends in the other parts of your state or country and you feel euphoric as also that time uh, you also have inability to prioritize or keep schedules because you are supposed to study for your exams you are supposed to do some daily house chores at your home you are supposed to attend somebody who was sick you are supposed to attend or call somebody in your neighborhood or your friend you you keep that at a lost priority and you prioritize your internet and smartphone so you get isolated you have no sense of time you spend most of the time on this gadget and uh, you uh, in fact waste your time using phone in a very judicious way in a nice way is good but not uh, a wastage of time then you have physical symptoms also because once you keep your head down all the time your eyes cling to your that the screen you have you obviously have eye problems you have backache you have carpal tunnel syndrome that means hand also gets fatigued you know it that once you type for long period of time your hands and fingers also get fatigued you have headaches if you use smartphone and uh, internet for long period of time because if there is an eye strain you can't sleep because your eyes are burning your head is really very very bad Uh, you also have poor nutrition because i told you that people don't uh, take their food at a proper time they normally either defer their meals or skip their meals even if they take meals it's in their back up mind the game was on on the this uh, smartphone i have hidden it from my parents i just want to quickly finish my meals that results in poor nutrition poor hygiene rather than spending time uh, 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 preparing or bathing yourself or taking a good bath every morning or in the day also you spend uh, on the on the in the bathroom you, you go to the washroom along with your cell phone and you start uh, scrolling there as well so you spend more time there as well in the internet uh, you have neck pain as well dry eyes i said 
you may have weight gain because you keep on staying all the time in your room or in some uh, place and you keep on taking junk foods as well along with and you don't have insight that what I'm taking on the other side because you are busy with the a cell phone and the internet. So other symptoms could be that uh, you get overwhelmed and you use it excessively. Uh, you, you ask your father, mother or elder brother or sister, give me the upgraded versions. Come on. I don't need this. phone I need a longer battery. Please give me a stronger battery phone with more memory so that I can have more and more uh, efficient uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the speed of the phone and more RAM. And most importantly, please increase the speed of our internet. I want to play games with my friends and you ask for more speeds and more and more GBs in your internet. You deny the evidence about harmful health consequences. That is why it is worrying that people start using smartphone and internet. They never feel that you are, they are using it excessively. And that is why I said initially that there is a thin line between use, misuse and addiction. And you are lost, you are inside, your perception is lost during this period till you reach where you are misusing or unfortunately getting addicted to it. So once you are misusing or getting addicted to it, you have less possibility of stopping its use. So we know and all of us know, even including me also, once we are on smartphone or internet, it negatively affects our health. Our finances also get drained. I would have worked during this time. I would have earned more money during this time for my family but I'm spending time on the phone and the uh, internet. Uh, I waste time as well. My social and family relationships, ideally staying at home rather than I should have called my family member, if not in COVID times, going to visit them. But I could have called them. I could have chatted. I could have uh, some uncle is in the neighborhood who is ill. I could have called him rather than spending all the time with internet. So, but at the uh, same time, people are not aware about these harmful consequences. So the perception is very, very poor and the gap is there. Once you are using it for a long time, you uh, spend a lot of time in using smartphone and internet, but at the same time, you cannot perceive it. So gap is increasing. That way you are losing insight into its use. It has also had a lot of impact, negative impact on our relationships. You understand we used to uh, hug each other, we used to meet each other after a long time, what was the level of euphoria within us and now there is less emotional connectivity also, you call your friend, oh where are you just asking him, the emotional connect that is lost because of the smartphone and internet is really really very obvious uh, you have a superficial level of relationships really, the way I meet with my friends like Ranjan uh, uh, Jay and uh, Gautam Dada, it is absolutely different once we physically meet but once we call or chat on internet it's very irregular and it is it's not i i acknowledge it it's not full of always uh, that emotion that humor that ple pleasure so you call everybody friend on your facebook but i'm sure i have around one 1500 friends on my facebook but i'm sure that only 15 out of them will be real friends. So 1% of your friends would be there who will come to your uh, help or rescue whenever you need them. Rest of them is absolutely friends on virtual, not in reality. So you need to understand that uh, friendship, definition of friendship has changed once it comes to these WhatsApp, uh, Facebook and other networks. So that way we, we see that uh, the people uh, who interact on Facebook are not actually the friend you meant once it was around before 20, 25 years. Uh, uh, there is also a risk of having increased uh, sexual pervasiveness, increased uh, increase in number of pre and marital relationships. If uh, our spouse sees us typing and we hide our phone and oh, come on to whom you are putting the message in or your brother or sister sees your uh, phone and uh, you get really very cautious that maybe my message has been read by another person. So smartphone has uh, quite starkly sown the seeds of mistrust within us. There is disharmony within the families, within the couples. It has given rise to a generation of irritable adults. I may tell you this is true, but this, this is unfortunate, but absolutely true. And adolescents with problematic internet use utilize dysfunctional coping strategies. 
So once we tell them, those who are on internet or smartphone, first of all, they don't accept it. Once they accept it, they give you one or the other reason that why I'm on internet. And they use very, very, very odd, or I would say, which are not actually warranted coping strategies to come out of this man's. So it has invaded our privacy also. If you understand, at times, uh, the, uh, it, uh, by default also, we uh, now post a photo on our Facebook or uh, social media website, which we never intended to. Uh, there is a blurred uh, relationship between a teacher and a student. The teachers on this panel may agree with you. At times, students send you some some images or some texts which are not really that good and once it blurs the the actual that what was earlier 30 years before what teacher meant and what uh, uh, the student meant some of the relationship is blurred if it comes to doctor patient relationship for us it is again blurred you will have patient coming with all the symptoms googled already and all the treatment with side effects so that way also it has uh, blurred the doctor patient relationship to a large extent Uh, so smartphone and we don't have so smart relationships, unfortunately. We are staying side by side. My son is on the one side. My wife is on the other side. My brother is on the uh, in front of me. We are chatting with our relatives and friends in the remotest corner of the world, away from us, thousands and thousands of kilometers. But what we don't know what our, our uh, the person who is staying besides me, does he need to talk to me or I need to talk to him? So we have, we are staying together in a room, but in fact disconnected completely or we are connected with those who are thousands and uh, thousands of kilometers away from us. So there you feel that there is a uh, need to get connected. There are problem of rogue messages also. Also, the smartphone cyberbullying. We know that it is a, it's a crime these days, and it is being reported from most of the states of our country. Uh, you have sexual messages coming in. You have hate messages, which actually create havoc. You could see that whenever you have turmoil, you have uh, crisis, or you have uh, rights anywhere. You have a lot of uh, hate messages coming in, which actually are not true. As uh, Ranjan told me uh, to the, in his uh, presentation, that there were uh, reports of deaths even in. Kashmir, the reports of five deaths in some area, which was not actually true at all. So my biggest worry, those our watching, uh, those uh, internet watching adolescents, their heads are bored, and we are worried that these smartphones will not make their career, and we wish and pray it does not break their career because they have to make eye contact with the world. They have to move out of their face interviews, go to their workplaces, work, go to their schools and colleges, study there, make friends, real friends, I mean. So they have to engage in social banters. They need to exchange uh, words and ideas with each other. They need to have, they need to get a perfect art of conversation with each other. So they also need to know skills that world expects from them so that they work in this world at their workplace or, uh, uh, or the, uh, the wherever they are working. So if you are suffering from all this, what I said, and if the relationships are so much disturbed, we need solutions. So what we need to do is that we need to educate our near and dear ones regarding the risk of smartphone and internet addiction. That's what we are doing today. Increase the recreational programs. Please come out of your cozy rooms. Not right now. I'm not telling you right now in COVID times. But once the COVID lockdown is over, uh, the COVID is out of us and we are very safe. Go for recreational. Even within your rooms, you can have recreational activities. You can have games, not online games, please. It is the indoor games. You can have carom. You can have, if you have premises or a dress, you can have badminton. So you can have a lot of things actually you can do. You can have increased social interaction within an outside family. Sit with your family, sit with your siblings, sit with your parents and grandparents, interact with them. They are the teachers around for you who can teach you how to become a good human being balance control and confidence in dealing with uh, that you are uh, a smartphone use set a limit of smartphone and internet bills we normally buy more and more data please don't do that 
delete the programs that cause addiction at times you feel that this game is really distracting me it has really impinged or it has uh, somehow gone into my studies as well i want to uh, delete this game from the smartphone apps and i just want to be free of mind i won't play this game ask a friend for help he might have suffered from the same and you he can help you out if the friend or the parent has not been able to help you ask a specialist a doctor who can help you out so you can find otherwise also uh the use of smartphones as an entertainment and reduce the use of smartphone uh disconnect your internet in between what i do myself also what i do is that i at times particularly during night after 9 o'clock 9:30 i put off my internet mobile internet also if i have wifi at home i put that off so that i am off this whatsapp facebook Email because it keeps on buzzing all the night, and actually you don't uh, sleep. You have you don't have a sound sleep, and it keeps on alarming you every twenty minutes, twenty seconds. And if you have good friends around or a, um, friends who are not uh, uh, well wishers and they want to spoil your sleep, every ten seconds you are uh, mobile. is buzz and you will get a whatsapp facebook and what not uh, so set a screen and internet exposure time limits on your apps also that i want to watch this news just for 30 minutes after that it will go off itself i want to uh, play this game because this is a covid time you may play inside prefer to play inside i want to play this game twice in a day morning or afternoon 30 minutes that's it not for 6 hours please so enhance awareness through outreach programs like we are doing today to provide uh, people with counseling also treatment programs are there already for there are addiction clinics which were started been by nimhans bangalore quite early when the addiction uh, uh, was reported in our country then you have psychotherapies if you need a psychologist or psychiatrist help uh, individual group family therapies you have behavior modification because this is a behavioral addiction you have dbt you have cognitive behavioral therapy which can help you art therapy recreation therapy and reality therapy so conclusion is two parts one is the positive part of use of smartphone and internet then you have a negative part the first i will discuss positive i am a positive person so i'll discuss positive with you smartphone can help you resolve many issues and give information from around the world the more aware you are about your relationship to smartphone and internet the more empowered you become remember this thing you need to be aware of your smartphone and internet use so let us put humans before devices don't prefer your cell phone over your father mother studies world and other things please love your living ones in front of you rather than your smartphone or uh, this internet so negative part of it is the problem is huge i would say the situation is rather worrying addiction is fairly common my psychiatrist friends from kolkata mumbai would agree with me even the panelists who are there would agree that a lot of children spend their time on internet so world needs to focus equally on traditional forms of addiction we normally talk about uh, heroin we talk about uh, uh, alcohol we talk about cannabis and nobody talks about uh, non chemical addiction that is this internet addiction so stick only connected with the reality we may be connected with the virtual world you see the youngsters connected we hug each other but you can see on the back they are actually on their internet so you are connected to the virtual world but i am afraid this should not continue and because this will disconnect us from reality and if this happens it will become more dangerous than uh, heroin and other drugs uh i hope uh, there are ladies mostly that's why i put the slide later on that all the ladies are awake and there is only one gentleman in the photograph who is sleeping i hope the participants are uh, the most of the ladies are were there on the panel i expect that most of the participants otherwise also uh, would be awake like the ladies in this not like the gentleman who is in the front and has spoiled the image of whole of this room thank you very much uh, thank, thank you sir. dr abdul mujid for your excellent deliberation i am dr ranjan vadacharya so the ultimate picture shows the main will be the main thank you very much so being the captain former captain of the indian cricket team shourab ganguly with me sachin tendulkar and virat kohli are there excellent deliberation to both of you uh, dr gautam shah has to leave early because of his previous commitment so he has given the charge to conduct the rest of the session we are running short of time we are we have only 15 minutes left to ask question i will ask with uh, dr majid yourself because you have mentioned in the last part that the behavioral addiction 
So like the chemical addiction, we have withdrawal symptoms. Similarly, the behavioral addiction must have some withdrawal symptom. You have mentioned about the various methods like restricting screen time. Do you have any other advice in form of pharmacotherapy and how this behavioral addiction can be compared with the chemical addiction? Is the same neurobiological processes going on? Over to you, your answer should be very brief. Yeah, Please. absolutely. I think uh, the psychiatrists would know that there is a biopsychosocial model of uh, diseases we have and it up to both chemical and non-chemical in that those who are taking wine, alcohol, cannabis or benzodiazepines, whatever addiction they are having, the basic model is the same. It's the release of dopamine from our brain, which is actually responsible for addictive behavior. So same is absolutely true for internet addiction. It gives you pleasure. You want to derive more and more pleasure. That is how you develop tolerance. Earlier, you would spend one to two hours on internet, but over the period of weeks, months, you spend three to four hours. And then over the period of years, you spend six to eight hours. And it causes significant impairment in your day-to-day -day routine activities. That is how it becomes a disorder. As you said, this is a behavioral addiction and the basic uh, pathophysiology is the same as, as it is for other addictions. The basic protocol for treatment or the management of this addiction problem is the same that we need to address it the way you said that decreasing the screen time you will have withdrawal symptoms like if we uh, withdraw a person suddenly from the internet and we tell him that don't use it at all that is not the way it would be same if we stop alcohol to an alcoholic without properly backing him up so the management reason is the same Symptoms could be different, but at the same time, the management is absolutely same. The therapies could be different. The management is done by a psychiatrist and a clinical psychologist. Thank you. Way back 25 years, Kimberly Young first mentioned about this internet addiction disorder and pathological internet use. But we have come across the long phase and still we are having this problem. My question, next question to Dr. Jay Shastri. Jay, are you here? Jay, can you hear me? Jay, you need to unmute yourself. Yes, yes, I, I can hear yes. you. Please the question ahead. asked by Shunil Mahato. Okay. As being an engineering student, most of the teachers suggest us to prepare for competitive exams like GATE. So what do you suggest? How can I prepare my, myself for the GATE examination? Over to you, Jay. Also, I think uh, as I discussed during my presentation, you have to stick to the basics. The name could be different. It could be GATE or IIT or JE or uh, diff different names which is given for different streams. But then I think it's very important that you understand uh, the exam, the format of it. And uh, of course, the kind of uh, topics and the kind of uh, subjects which are attached in, in terms of studies. And uh, you, you have to make sure that you... Uh, properly channelize your time. You have to make sure that you structure your day-to-day -day work uh, depending on the amount of time that you have because that's something which is very, very important. Uh, every every individual has, has a resource to do well in life. It's only how you apply it. So it, it boils down to the application of the resource. And if, if you are aware about uh, your abilities, if you are staying positive, if you are sticking to basics, I'm sure most of us should be able to crack any exams because uh, it, it, it's something which is there within us. It's just we have to recognize it. So I, I don't know if I have answered to the precise thing, but I, it, it's primarily knowing yourself, sticking to the basic and structuring your day-to-day -day activity or time in a way to approach the exam. So that's, that's my tip to that particular gentleman. So I'm instigated to ask one more question to you, Jay. So yeah. how to, you have mentioned about the mnemonics, te mnemonics technique to remember the text. So what about the various other strategy? Because we have to process through the visual memory, verbal memory. So going through these techniques, how it is important to go through the studies. For example, how long we one should read, whether the question and answer method will be the best. So how long the mnemonizing technique and for a duration of one hour of study, how one student should read the text. And another question to you, it's very frequently commonly asked, which, which subjects will be uh, read in what part particular time? For example, the science students, when he or she should read the physics, chemistry, biology, and mathematics in different time of the day. Over to you, Jay. So I think uh, answering your subject-related question first, uh, uh, 
again my personal there are no studies or evidence to it but then well, the subjects which are most comfortable should be uh, finished at the earliest because it builds your confidence to a different level when you uh, most of the time i have seen people starting with a subject where they are struggling and uh, they continue to struggle and that's where uh, the built up of anxiety and built up of stress happens so uh, subject wise i'm i'm sure engineering would have a different kind of uh, uh, groups and the subjects all together but then something which you are always comfortable you try and finish it as i mentioned during also approach towards the exams that if you in in your exam examination if you have a, a, a question which you are more comfortable just get over it finish it off and then try and approach the parts which are more difficult because uh, if you initiate with a difficult subject or where you need some sort of assistance and more hard work you might end up losing uh, some more amount of time which uh, puts pressure on the subjects which are more easy and comfortable to you so that is strongly suggest that you start with the subjects which you are more comfortable and then gradually uh, go towards the subject which are difficult to address yes thank I, you very much yes tech, please uh, technique wise i'm uh, i'm sure uh, the mnemonics is something which i mentioned during my uh, studies uh, or during my presentation but then uh, you have to use as many mediums as possible we are living in an era uh, majid bhai talked about the screen addiction but as a student if you are spending time on uh, on on videos which are informative which are educational which which are adding to your knowledge base which are uh, giving which is giving clarity uh, so I, i i i'm completely game for it so during our times we did not have those opportunities nowadays people have so many different uh, uh, ways to study uh, and as many uh, as, as many sensory organs you can involve the more you hear you remember the more you see you remember the more you read you remember the more you write you remember so again what what your strength is what your preference is there are there are individuals who are more comfortable reading and remembering there are people who are more comfortable with their uh, auditory skills and they listen to uh, certain uh, clips and uh, lectures and they are more comfortable with remembering so remember uh, uh, being being aware about your strength is something which is very very important uh, as you go higher up i think one aspect which probably Uh, would also help is the group studies because at times uh, uh, if you are uh, not getting into that uh, rat race and being too much competitive uh, sharing uh, uh, your queries with your uh, colleagues or your teachers and forming a group where you can uh, answer uh, get get answers and uh, uh, get your queries resolved is a, a one of the very effective way uh, i can tell you from my personal experience doing my uh, medical days that had women tremendously for me so that's another aspect but then whatever uh, sensory organ involvement that you can uh, do i think it will work wonderfully well thank you different brain structures are being involved for the different process of the memory memory has different by registration storage and retrieval or recall part so when you recall a phone number for example 10 digit mobile number initially it is stored as a working memory it is the frontal part the front part of the brain that dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is related to it some other memory implicit memory has the basic various area especially the medial temporal lobe and hippocampus the other uh, procedural memory like cycling swimming we have the cerebellum and basal ganglia are being involved and emotional memory are related to the amygdala which is very very emotionally yeah. charged the adolescents are very emotionally charged and it has been found in various mm -hmm. functional neuroimaging the size of amygdala is huge compared to the control part of the age at one so my next question to majid bhai uh, it has been asked by uh, one of the students that uh, what, how should we uh, spend the leisure time sunil mahato has asked this question you, before before your deliberation we used to spend our leisure time watching uh, various web series and uh, our, using our smartphones But what should we do how should we spend our leisure time now over to you dr abdul majid Yeah, 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 the very good question. I think in COVID times, uh, some amount of time has to be spent on smartphone and internet. Some amount, I am saying. But normally, what we should do, all of us should do in COVID times, is, is that somehow make a healthy schedule. Even if you cannot follow it hundred percent, follow it by fifty percent. What you were doing before COVID, for example, you will get up in the morning, 
have a breakfast in the morning preferably with your family not in your own room go to your uh, with your family talk to them have breakfast and particularly for the students uh, who are here uh, they can read books they can study during this period because early morning you are quite fresh from 8 o'clock to 11 12 o'clock you can read as well then lunch together with the family i would again recommend they normally say that you have PPEs for doctors, personal protective equipments. There is PPE for all of us. You can pray together, you can play together, you can eat together. And most importantly, you can exercise together. So you have only PPE for doctors, but you have PPE for all of us. So you can pray, play, exercise and eat together. And that makes it a wonderful thing. And you can have other indoor games as well. You don't need to go to a ground. You can move up down the stairs if you don't have a terrace, if you don't have a premises. So, so And most importantly, sleep well and sleep for the stipulated period of time. Don't sleep at one o'clock during night and get up next day at three o'clock. Please maintain your sleep cycle. Sleep at 10 to 11 whenever you used to sleep. One hour either side doesn't matter in COVID times. Get up. You are getting up at six or seven. Don't get up at 10 or 11 in the morning. So please and please stick to this and uh, balance the diet. I would say less of carbohydrates and sugar, less of cholesterol, less of fats, more of fiber dry of vegetables. I think that will make and most importantly, you can use this mobile phone for connecting with your those normally we would say that we don't have time we don't have time to call our relatives we don't have time to chat with our friends we don't have time to engage with our children with our parents now you have enough of time you had we were all of us were complaining till now that we don't have time now you have enough of time you fulfill those assignments during the time this is sort of a grace period for you where you can rediscover yourself you can innovate. You can have different ways of coping with your stress. I think that is not only a peer, come on, go on to the smartphone and play games. You can use the same smartphone to connect you with your loved ones. Call them rather than putting the message only. Messages get less, less emotions. But once I talk to Jai Bhai or Ranjan Bhai, it gives a different tone at all. So connect and call them. Uh, I uh, request, I think all of the participants here, if they follow it to a large extent, their anxiety, their fears and other things would be somehow addressed too. Uh, I will take the last question and last question will be answered by all three of us. I will begin with Dr. Jay Shastri followed by uh, Dr. Abdul Majid and I will answer at last. So the question asked by Maina Khosh. As it is all, it's a long question. It's a, as it is already been discussed about how this COVID-19 situation is also an opportunity to better ourselves and live healthy lifestyle as most of us in our homes. But what about those students who are currently away from home and they have more things to worry about, like about self, about family, about exams, and also how about when such stranded students will be able to be able to be back home? Please, sir, if you can guide us or advice us. So in a nutshell, what will happen to the educational system? What next during the unlocked phase one and after that? First, to begin, Dr. Jay Shastri. I think I'll, 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 I'll just talk about uh, being mindful here because living in, in the moment becomes very, very important. There are so many uncertainties around. Every day you're getting a different figure. Every day uh, you are getting a different circular from the government. You can do this, you cannot do this. Uh, but there are different cha uh, there are changes happening practically each and every moment of our life. So I, uh, for for to remain focused to being practical, I think it's very important that you you remain mindful. You uh, are uh, just living in this particular moment, or uh, maybe uh, uh, for next half an hour, one hour, and not stretching yourself too further. And that will make you feel in control of the situation because. What creates anxiety, restlessness, negativity is being out of control. And if you approach this stepwise pattern, it will always help you to be more powerful and you should be able to overcome this crisis. Humankind, the human race has seen crisis all throughout. As mentioned in your presentation, and then there are crises that we have seen and we have overcome them. And it's, it's important that we do not succumb to it and uh, just hold on to our guns, make sure that we come out triumph. And one thing which will help us, according to me, very, very strongly is being mindful, living in this moment. Dr. Abdul Majid, your response, what next? 
Yeah, I think uh, this is a significant change in our lives. COVID around us. This has posed a great challenge to us, but at the same time, we should take it as an opportunity as well to rediscover, as I said, to improvise ourselves, to innovate and to do a lot of things, actually. We cannot play a victim card, let me tell you. The reason is that this is the crisis in whole world. Even the mighty Americans and Europeans have, are struggling with their health structure. They were proud of it. Italy was proud of, Europe was proud of its health structure. They are struggling and they are in a bad shape. So we need to understand those who are out of our homes, be it students or the migrants, they have tough time. There is no doubt. We can empathize with them. We can even reach out to them the way we want to and we want to help them. If there are migrants around my house or within my uh, this uh, mohalla or within my village or within my town, we can maximum do and we can help them out. But at the same time, the government is doing their own job, getting people from uh, the other countries to their uh, native place in India or from other one state to another state where they are living. But at the same time, we need to understand that as I said, the victim card has not to be played. We need to understand that this is such a thing which has come after a long, long time. I think, I hope and I wish and I pray that, our, that the next generation who are the participant right now, they don't see another event like this in their uh, whole of the lifetime. But we can learn and we can teach our uh, the kids tomorrow. They can, uh, in fact, make their kids aware tomorrow that we went through this phase where it was very, very bad. Our life was threatened. We were fearful. We were locked down for a couple of months. Uh, our uh, essential commodities, uh, were, they were scarce and we had to find them out. The medical health was very meager and it was very, very difficult to access it. So this way, we actually can take this opportunity to innovate, as I said, that we can look for other methods. The students, the teachers have gone for the online classes. We, the psychiatrists or the doctors or other professionals have gone for webinars. And similarly, the patients have contacted us through phones. So always a disaster gives or a calamity gives you always an opportunity to improvise. That is how humankind who was crawling before has stood up and he is the finest race among the world. We, we have to fight it out. There is nobody else from other planet or any part of universe coming to this place and help you out. I think we need to put our heads together, be it professionals, be it bureaucrats, be it our ministers, whosoever there, ourselves also. All of us need to contribute. And once we contribute to individual levels, I think the difficult Everything is going to finish. Even these difficult times, the COVID times are going to finish. So there will be a time, oh, we'll be saying, oh, it was last year we had COVID uh, year all the all the way. But next year, you never know, hopefully, and we pray for that, to 2021 would be absolutely a marvelous thing for us and we'll be, inshallah, enjoying next year as well. Thank you. Thank you, Majid Bhai. Before I sign off from this podium uh, and responding to the Moina uh, Ghosh question, my take-home message to all of you, those who have still with us, around 200, uh, 200, near about 200 participants still with us, managing your own mental health and psychosocial well-being during this lockdown is as important as in managing your physical health. Avoid using unhelpful coping strategies in the form of use of tobacco or alcohol or other drugs during this crisis period. I am very. I would like to emphasize one important point that some healthcare worker, including the doctors, nurses, the paramedical staff, the lab technologists, and other frontline warriors, are getting ostracized and stigmatized by the relatives, the flag complex uh, cohabitants, and their family members are not being are getting stigmatized, and communities are not accepting them, aggravating more stigma and fear. Please do not do that. The stigma associated with mental health problems may cause reluctance to seek support for both COVID-19 and mental health condition. Thank you very much to all of you who have been there. Really, I would like to express our sincere gratitude on behalf of Indian Psychiatric Society to the Department of Computer Science and Engineering and Information Technology Excellent. Department of the Techno India College, Banipur and Institutional Innovation Council. Over to the organizer, over to Mrs. Maumita Chakraborty, Madam. Anthony, ma'am. Yes, thank you so much uh, for your kind words. A heartfelt thank you to all the speakers of this webinar for helping us understand and realize how to handle mental stress at this hour of crisis. Please accept our sincere appreciation for an outstanding presentation. Thank you so much for sharing 
your time and experience with us. We are genuinely running short of time, so it is a kind request to everyone that whoever's question could not be answered, you can mail your question at the given, given email ID. It will be sent to our experts, and after receiving the answers, you will be surely notified about it. Now, this brings us to the end of this e event. However, this program cannot end without conveying a vote of thanks to each and every participant of this webinar. On this note, I would like to introduce to you one of the eminent members of TCV, Mr. Obhijit Kumar Choudhury. He is presently the teacher in charge in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering and is considered to be the pillars, one of the pillars of TCV. Obhijit sir, please take over and say a few words. Obhijit sir, your sound is. Yeah, you are not properly audible. Please check your sound. Now am I audible? Hello. Yeah, a little bit audible. But uh, the sound is very low, sir. Hello. Actually, there, there, there is very much noise in your sound. Uh, can you please clear the noise a little bit? Yes, please do that. Uh, I can't hear any, anything. Can anybody enlighten me whether I am is Hello. online? Yes. Hello. Yes. Is, is it now okay? Am yes, I audible? Yes, yes, yes. It's okay. Yes, it's okay. Yes, yes. Okay. 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 Yes, okay. 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 A very warm and uh, graceful evening to our uh, most valued guests, management committee, or the teachers, my beloved students across the India, and everyone gathered in this webinar. Uh, no words are there uh, are enough to express our gratitude and acknowledge the contribution of those who worked really hard to make this webinar most successful. On behalf of my college, Techno Engineering College, Banipur, I extend a really hearty vote of thanks to our honorable speakers who spare time from their busiest schedule to grace the occasion. Today, we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts and this will surely be going to encourage us in our future events. Your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new path. My gratitude to all the speakers for gracing the occasion and sharing their opinions today. Thank you so much. Thank Over you. to Shantini Ram. Thank you, Abhijitda, for your kind words. Uh, a very big thank you to each and every participant of this national webinar. A, big, a message from me to everyone that is stay safe, stay at home and stay healthy. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you, you everyone. Thank, thank, thank you everyone. Thank you all of you. Thank you participants. Thank you so much. It's a real pleasure to be with you this evening. Thank you very much for this Thank opportunity. You, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.
I request all the organizers to, to, to stay for a few moments. We have some further discussion. So can we all uh, stay for a few moments? Only the organizer. <laughs> 